What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto What If. If you end up liking the video please consider subscribing, it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my second channel so if you want some more what ifs go check out my other channels. And with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. Eddard Stark or Ned Stark as he was known by most men in the north stormed into his room within the confines of the large castle known as Winterfell his emotions were one of anger rage pain and despair all rolled up on one the wolf's blood and him boiling to the point where he almost felt as if his body was changing into the very animal his house banner sported since the time of its founding why was he filled with such rage such fury, such anger his brother Brandon Stark the eldest and future. Lord of the North was dead their own father the once current Lord of the North was dead too slain by the Mad King Ares II Targaryen after going to King's Landing to make his plea to the Mad King to return his son's dead body to him and if it could not get any worse then that his dear sweet sister Lyanna Stark had been taken by the Mad King's son Reader Targaryen Lyanna was to be married to Ned's dear childhood friend, and sworn brother Robert Baratheon of Horse Baratheon even now Robert was. Rallying his house his two younger brothers and anyone else who were against the Mad King's actions against Ares II Targaryen and what would surely be a massive civil war Ned was planning to join Robert with all the armies of the North now under his command as the current Lord of the North in Winterfell after leaving within the hour adding the armies from House Tully from his recent marriage to Caitlin Tully, who was his eldest brother's betrothed before such a duty was passed down to him upon. The man's death the woman herself was beautiful only a few maidens in all the realm who could be matched in that field and even then the few that did were either the one Lannister girl Cersei Elia Martell of Dorne and of course Lyna Stark herself so angry at what had happened to his family Ned ignored how his leg hit the desk in his room and caused a secret compartment with a piece of parchment, rolling onto the floor stopping in his fit of rage Ned looked down at the parchment and saw his brother's seal on it before reluctantly picking it up he didn't even know that compartment in his desk existed and wondered what his brother had left behind for him prior to his death Ned was actually afraid to open it due to the possibly personal nature of what was written on it when was this written why was it written and why was it hidden in the desk's secret compartment in the first place knowing the only way he would get answers to these growing questions Ned reluctantly broke the seal on. The parchment slowly unrolled the paper and began to read what were his eldest brother's final words to him and in that moment Ned Stark's life and the way the Game of Thrones was played in the Seven Kingdoms would be changed drastically forever further north hidden location east of Winterfell Ned Stark rode with Sir Roderick Castle one of the most trusted men in Winterfell and a rare knight of the north the two rode swiftly on horseback, with a young recently named Maester Lewin who they felt would possibly be of some aid to them at their intended destination are you sure about this my lord I have no doubt your brother's handwriting was his own and was of sound mind when written but surely he was mistaken no one lives on this side of the north or this far into it said Roderick while Ned nodded since he read his brother's letter over and over again before showing it to the two men with him I'm certain of it Sir Roderick, if my brother's words are indeed true the help we need to fight. House Targaryen and the Mad King is here answered Ned before the three came to the location on the crude map left behind by the late Brandon Stark a house a strange looking house that not designed like the other homes in the north it was wider in size the roof slanted well past the inner wall of the home underneath the extended roof was a wooden floor based walkway that went seemingly went around the entire building the walls of the house were wooden with strange wooden doors with a white square parchments on them to the right of the house was a simple garden and a few surprisingly lush trees on either side of the building add to the fact it was now snowing around here made it all the more breathtaking if not mystical in nature there is something off here my lord it's in the air whispered Sir Roderick while looking around for any hostile enemy his eyes currently could not see I feel it too Lord Stark I don't know if it's actually magic, but something is indeed in the air. Something strong something powerful added Maester Lewin while feeling a tad nervous I trust Brandon's words Sir Roderick Maester Lewin so long as we are respectful and polite we will come to no harm here said Ned before getting off his horse and slowly walked toward the strange house only for the strange door of the house to slide open and a figure stepping out into the light for them to see greetings and salutations Ned Stark I've been expecting you whispered the figure still in the shadows. Surrounding the inner workings of the house despite being out in the open and daylight with snow all around them add to the fact the shadowy figure had three eyes with the third eye being dead center on his forehead was a bit frightening to the three men of the north and his right hand was a monk staff making a clinking sound with the rings at the very top hitting each other when moving the clothing was strange to some kind of coat reaching down past the man's knees, at the back with orange of 
all colors on it with red mixed into it as clothing was black pants black shirt vest and strange footwear with the feet plus stockings being worse exposed yet he was able to walk easily enough and then the man's face had long spiky blonde hair that was practically golden the hair alone could almost have him be mistaken for a Lannister or someone the Lannisters would be envious if they saw such hair matching, if not outdoing their own the man's golden hair was almost as long as his coat in fact. And while most of the hair was in fact blonde worthy of a Lannister there were long red highlighted streaks within them too you could almost say this man's heritage was a mix Lannister and Tully with the red hair mixed into the blonde as for the man's face it sported strange whisker mark like scars on either side of his face which seemed to be a natural part and thus could be considered birthmarks of some sort as for the man's three eyes, two of the natural set were an intense blue that seemed to glow with power and the third on the man's forehead was nearly lavender color that one would mistake for being blind be careful Lord Stark he could be some kind of wizard taught ancient magic of old or maybe a demon of some sort whispered Roderick to Ned while the urge to unsheathe his sword came to the forefront of his mind only Ned's hand on his arm stopped him perhaps he is one or the other maybe a combination of both I do not know what I do know Sir Roderick is he has clearly been prepared. For our arrival to draw swords now would be foolish we came here to speak and be civil I will speak to them alone you and Maester Lewin will stay here with the horses replied Ned with Roderick and Lewin now looking fearful but my lord what if he puts some kind of spell on you turns you against us asked Roderick since he was sure this man wielded some kind of magic to ensnare the mind and rob a person of their free will then I trust you to do your duty and end my life to prevent your lord from living. A life of being a puppet at the same time should the worst happen Maester Lewin can make his escape back to Winterfell to inform my wife of what has befallen me said Ned in a grim tone Roderick looking at him before looking at the figure with a cautious expression on his face come on and Ned Stark you'll freeze to death out here bring your men too I won't have people freezing in silence outside my home commanded the figure before re-entering the shadows of the house my lord asked Roderick worriedly since he knew if they went into that house there was a good chance they wouldn't be coming back out of courage and faith Sir Roderick we must risk much to be rewarded even if the risk is an unknown answered Ned while marching forward to the house it is usually the unknown risks that are the most dangerous and yet they bring about the greatest of rewards if the venture proves fruitful a rarity to be sure, but in these growing dark times one must have a strong heart to face such things thought Lewin before he had dismounted from his horse and followed the two men heading to the open doors of the house boots off when you enter I won't have snow and mud staining my floor called out the figure deeper into the house all three men of the north looked at each other a look of confusion on their faces since most people didn't do that when visiting other houses foot were always stayed on even when walking into the house not just because it kept the feet warm it also allowed them to keep their feet clean on the stone sometimes hay covered floor they walked on still this house was anything but normal same with the host within a strange man to be sure keep your wits about you my lord Roderick reminded Ned who nodded with a small form of hesitation I maester Lewin stay behind us should we fall into a trap it will be up to you to escape and make for Winterfell whispered Ned with Lewin reluctantly nodding I would prefer it would be you who escapes my lord still I will do what is commanded of me replied Lewin with reluctance in his tone the trio eventually entered the house finding it strangely had a pleasant warm feel within it as if they were in the south during a warm summer the room they were in was a bit crowded for an entranceway but saw where they could remove their boots and walk on smooth hardwood floors the further they walked the friendlier the atmosphere was for them and were surprised by how bright it was in the house with so few candles lit and key places of the building though they quickly deduced the reason behind this was due to the house being made up of wood and paper so the risk of a fire burning things up quickly was very high come in and sit commanded the figure from the one room to their right with a similar door they saw at the front of the house slightly open I feel like some sort of adventurer in a distant and unknown land thought Ned before he put his hand on the door and slowly slid the door open while being careful not to damage it the room itself was spacious strange yet intricate looking matting of sorts was on the ground instead of hardwood flooring in the middle of the room was a strange low level table but there were no chairs and the host of the house was sitting down on the matting like it was natural his face was one of slight amusement at seeing them unsure how to act in his house and were clearly afraid to do something he deemed to be insulting or disrespectful it was just as Ned first thought when Entering the strange house they were adventurers in an unknown land sit please said the figure calmly and respectfully while motioning them to sit not to speak out of turn good sir but where are the chairs asked Roderick in a cautious yet respectful tone there are no chairs here where I am from we to use them but not in the living area of the home don't worry the padding here is clean I wouldn't be sitting on it myself if the floor was filthy replied the figure before he again motioned them to 
sit when in one's home do as they do but still be respectful in your own way whispered Maester Lewin with Ned and Roderick nodding discreetly before they sat down close to the table when we first arrived you originally said you were expecting me said Ned since he wasn't sure how to start off the conversation sooner or later your older brother left a letter in the event something happened to him to your father or possibly both answered the figure calmly before he took out his pipe a match and lit the pipe it was in a hidden compartment of my desk within my room said Ned with the figure nodding yes I know I suggested to Brandon to put it there when you were out on a hunting trip or doing something that took you away from your room for a few hours it was hidden to protect you and him from anyone else possibly knowing about me until the time was truly right considering how your knight here reacted to my appearance and the sudden need to draw a sword you can understand why my existence is Known to a handful of people replied the figure with Roderick stiffening at his words he actually heard that thought Roderick while wondering if the man before them had in fact heard his words or maybe seen something to assume something was said in that manner yes though to be fair good sir your strange clothing and the additional eye makes whoever sees you at first glance become quite nervous said Ned with respect while he looked at the figure's third eye, for a second the figure laughed a little at that comment that is does which is one of the reasons why I keep to myself and far away from the rest of the world though if you are here it means my warning to Brandon and Ricard was ignored replied the figure with sadness in his voice you knew my father as well as my brother asked Ned in surprise I met your father Ricard and his father many years ago when he was still a small boy learning how to hunt for food in the forest a good archer to be sure and an even better swordsman when he was old enough to wield ice said the figure while watching the three men look at him with total shock written on their faces but that would make you well over a century old you don't even look a few years older than Lord Stark exclaimed Lewin suddenly at this knowledge of the man in front of them true and thanks for saying that about me looking so young I try to stay in shape said the figure with a hint of amusement in his voice how old are you asked Roderick suddenly before he was given a Side glaring glance by Ned for speaking the question due to the rudeness behind it even if the question was spoken involuntarily let's just say I'm old enough to see the rise and fall of dragon's magic and the white walkers themselves said the figure with Ned Roderick and Lewin both feeling a sense of dread fill their hearts the white walkers are real asked Lewin since he always felt such creatures were the stuff of fantasies told by parents to children in order to keep them from being too wild. Let's just say the White Walkers and I have a long painful history together remarked the figure quietly and in a tone that told the three men not to pry into it are you some kind of deity one of the old gods or one of the seven asked Roderick with a sense of awe despite this man's words being slightly far-fetched to God no I am a man a mortal man who fought clawed bled and silently cried all his life to get where he is now with the power to do many things many terrible things in fact the correct term for myself to identify what I am would be to call me a sage but I choose not to do these things because the world is no longer able to tolerate someone like me the high septons representing the seven would condemn me for being what I am and my abilities the power I wield is dangerous and would only frighten you and them if seen for yourself regardless of what I am septons were never ones to embrace magic any more than the grand maesters residing in the citadel so I stay out of their way and Watch from afar as man changes with the times replied the figure while Ned frowned forgive me for saying this but I don't know your name my brother's letter to me never mention it and in my thirst for knowledge pertaining to the reason behind his letter I never asked it said Ned while the figure smiled it's Naruto Uzumaki Naruto where I am from the last name comes first in terms of introductions it might seem strange to you I understand but that's just how it was back when I was growing up said Naruto with a grin while Ned Roderick and Luwin mentally spoke the name in their minds to get a feel for it before they considering even speaking his name it took about a minute before Ned truly adjusted to this information and decided to press forward to one of the reasons he was here Naruto of House Uzumaki I came here not only for answers but to ask for your help in combating the Mad King Ares to Targaryen he has been burning people alive killing innocents my father and brother included his own son Rhaegar Targaryen has also kidnapped my sister Lyanna and holds her hostage somewhere according to Brandon's letter you are a man of honor and can be trusted to help in a cause if asked for your aid with the reasons behind it are worthy will you help me and those who are fighting in this war against the Mad King said Ned while Naruto was silent for a second before taking a drag from his pipe and letting the smoke leave through the side of his mouth. While thinking the man's words over in his head I respect you Ned I have only just met you but even now I can tell you and the other two men here with you are good honorable people I can see it in your eyes as clearly as I can see the snow outside is pure white your house is well known since its founding for being honorable and keeping your word when given your brother and father were the same way when it comes to their word and honor I deeply respect that when I give my word or promises I keep. 
them no matter what stands in my way House Lannister may have the largest gold mines in all of the Seven Kingdoms but the words of a Stark are worth their weight from those very mines plus if the Mad King isn't stopped he will burn all of Westeros to the ground simply because Ares knows he can should no one truly oppose him despite my personal misgivings on returning to the world once again I will assist you and your allies in this endeavor, if only to ensure the war ends faster with fewer. Lives lost said Naruto with Ned Roderick and Luwin looking happy with this good news thank you Naruto you won't regret this said Ned with a smile that he hadn't been able to produce since his marriage to Caitlyn I will hold you to that Lord Stark I wield powers and abilities not seen for many years since the time of the White Walkers the sight of my powers and skills may frighten and anger those around you I'm sure even you realize, humanity has always had a history of fearing and hating what they do not understand to the point of simply attacking what they fear and hate in the name of some misguided sense of justice replied Naruto with Ned nodding and understanding I understand don't worry Naruto you won't be disappointed in the army of the north or in Robert's own said Ned while bowing his head slightly it's not you who will disappoint me Ned it's those closest to you thought Naruto since he had been expecting Ned for a reason and not just because of the man's brother had left the hidden message for him tucked away in a damn compartment in a desk the Byakugan had a hidden power a power not even those born naturally with the eye from his time knew the truth with a lot of chakra superior control and extreme focus added to the Byakugan the eye in question had the power to see into the future not every far into the future but well enough into it to see certain events that will transpire if left to their own devices, and Naruto had seen many things happen when doing that bad and good. Sadly he saw more bad than good these days sometimes being an immortal sage was less of a blessing and more of a curse you plan to leave soon for the war correct to meet up with Robert asked Naruto with Ned nodding I actually plan to actually leave much sooner but the message Brandon left me to find you unknowingly delayed my plans replied Ned with Naruto nodding okay you meet up with Robert and his army, I will get there in my own way I have to get some of my own personal affairs in. Order said Naruto while his eyes seemed to go off into the distance for a moment thank you again Naruto no doubt your assistance will several countless innocent lives in the years to come said Ned before he Roderick and Luwin slowly getting to their feet albeit in a slightly clumsy manner they could have been worse and tripped over each fortunately they young and were made of sterner stuff after the trio got their boots on they quickly left Naruto's house got on their horses and headed back to Winterfell to move out with the rest of the army while Ned and Roderick would be moving with the army Maester Lewin would stay in Riverrun in order to look after Ned's wife Caitlin Stark since there was a good chance she was pregnant already with Ned's child though upon his or her birth the child along with Caitlin would be moved to Winterfell to further protect them both from harm should the Mad King go after them both all the while Naruto sat there smoking from his pipe deep and thought for a Long moment before he stood up and walked into a nearby room inside this very room stood the many different items and weapons of his old life before now each one an adventure and a half for him and those who lived to see the next could be spoken the barbs of today could no doubt sing tales of his deeds and actions along with those who fought beside him during those conflicts and wars of old so many wars so much conflict so much death I will help this world, I will come out of the shadows and help this world one more time to see if humanity is worthy of my help let us see what will happen when the night aim sage of sixth paths enters into this game of thrones whispered naruto before he took the once broken and now repaired three-eyed mask abito once used during the fourth shinobi war off the wall no point in letting anyone truly know who he was for the moment time skip it had been years since robert's rebellion came to an end Ares two targaryen was dead slain by his own kingsguard sir Jaime Lannister of House Lannister his son Rhaegar Targaryen was also dead slain at the trident by Robert himself with his war hammer to the man's skull soon after Robert proclaimed himself King of Westeros and the Seven Kingdoms all with the backing of House Stark Tully Aaron of the Vale and of course House Lannister. After the battle at the Trident was won to enforce his position still not all were happy with this new king sitting on the Iron Throne namely the Iron Islands led by Balon Greyjoy. Of House Greyjoy nine years following Robert sitting on the throne many claim it was the vast numbers that brought the Greyjoys down one house vs the entire might of the Iron Throne but that wasn't the case it wasn't just one house vs the Iron Throne it was one house vs the might of the Iron Throne and one infamous demon sage who was crucial during Robert's rebellion when Robert had summoned the might of his throne into war. To combat the Greyjoys Ned had sought out Naruto to ask him one more time to help put down this unprovoked attack on the seven kingdoms of course this time around Ned wasn't as welcome in Naruto's house like the first time and for good reason Naruto had fought for Robert during Robert's rebellion getting some odd looks from the future king and the armies in question when they saw him dressed like Abito had been when facing the shinobi alliance during the fourth shinobi war many snickered, while others openly called him a freak of nature that should be put down in. 
the name of the seven when Robert saw me was inclined to agree with his men at first despite Ned vouching for him and asking the man to give Naruto a chance to prove himself so Naruto being Naruto decided to make a wager with Robert a wager surrounding his life Naruto wagered he could kill well over 2,000 men with a single swing of his gun by or rather kill 2,000 men with a single swing of Uchihamadara's gun by, which he had taken following the end of the fourth shinobi war if he failed to do. That for Robert the future king of the seven kingdoms could take his head and that would be the end of it Robert had looked at him like someone had just told him the mad king was saying before glancing at Ned who nodded at him to accept and did so in front of the other soldiers of the army around him though none of them took him seriously and why should they he was a strange mask wearing individual, with three eyes none of which were now identical to those that could actually see them and live to. Tell the tale when I was read the other purple the third one a light lavender that could be mistaken for a failed eye that could no longer see anything but the joke was on them when Naruto walked forward alone toward the army across the way laughing at him for thinking he could fight them all alone even Robert's own army was doing the same while thinking the masked sage was mad and simply wanted to die he shut them all up with a single swing of his gun by, and the enemy army of 12,000 men had been reduced to 8,000 with the 4,000 he killed becoming bloody chunks in the wind after that no one laughed at him quite the opposite but that wasn't why Naruto was not welcoming Ned so much when entering his house to speak to him the reason Elia Martel of House Dorn wife of Riyagar Targaryen and mother to their children innocent children at that Elia Martel of House Dorn and her children of Targaryen blood were the main reason for this friction between himself and Robert Naruto had warned Ned that Robert was not of sound mind when on the march to take King's Landing nor should they trust Tywin Lannister when the man had sent a raven to Robert with a coded message stating how he would help him take the throne from the Mad King after the victory at the Trident with Rhaegar dead Naruto, knew that Tywin knew where the winds of victory were blowing and didn't want to be caught in the fallout when the Mad King eventually died so the Lion made a power play of his own when Robert marched his army to King's Landing and Jaime had killed the Mad King himself with a sword to his back to ensure no one of Targaryen blood lived to sit on the throne in the future or challenge Robert Tywin ordered Greater the Mountain Clegane and Amory Lorch to kill Elia Martell along with her children, when the sacking of King's Landing occurred through Twine's brilliant act of coming under the understanding by the king to help defend the city and the king himself from Robert's approaching forces the two monsters in armor made their move killing the king's guard of the Red Keep in a brutal fashion befitting their reputations and moved to end the life of the queen and her children per their lord's orders fortunately Naruto put a stop to that before the two could carry out their mission not that anyone but Naruto himself knew that part just as the two monsters smashed down the door to Elias' room Naruto himself quickly appeared via Kamui and put the two in a Jinjutsu which immobilized them for a time of a mere 30 minutes it was still plenty of time for what Naruto needed to do which involved getting Elia and her children out of King's Landing the same way he came into the Red Keep after that Naruto proceeded to use the corpse clone Jutsu and used several bodies he had acquired in the form of dead men he had killed a quick appliance of Fuin Jutsu too put up a Jinjutsu on all three of the bodies to make them appear as if they were Elia and her children to anyone else seeing them when Gregor and Armory Lorch were free from the Jinjutsu they were standing over a blood-soaked rug covering the bodies while under the impression they had done the deed their sick minds had easily created through the illusion Naruto put them under when the two men went into the throne room they saw Robert, sitting on the throne Ned standing beside him on one side and Twin Lannister on the other a few steps down not far away from them was Jaime Lannister stained in blood of the Mad King and the Mad King himself dead on the floor with his mad look still on his face as they approached the Iron Throne Tywin was smug over what he had done and knew his reward for this was whatever he wanted it to be once asked Ned glared at Jaime from time to time over the breaking of his oath to serve the king faithfully, despite the king in question not being of sound mind uh friction between the Starks and the Lannisters got worse though when Tywin's two mad dogs came in with the bodies of Elia Martell and her children the long trail of blood leaving the rug while dragging it effortlessly across the floor to the foot of the steps leading up to the throne only made it worse Gregor proceeded to open the rug himself to show Robert the three bodies and was praised by Tywin for a job well done while the new king merely looked at the bodies for a few seconds before nodding his head once in acknowledgement of the deed done Ned however wanted to reach for his sword and kill the two men right there on the spot for this act of barbarism these two had done anyone with eyes capable of seeing could tell these deaths were not clean in the slightest and Ned knew there had been suffering behind each one but Robert wouldn't allow it as far as the new king of the seven kingdoms was concerned the only good Targaryen was a dead one and any who gave birth to them so 
long as he didn't know how they died only that they did die was enough for Robert but not for Ned the two had argued about it for weeks following Robert becoming king and how Jamie Greger and Lorch should be sent to the wall for their crimes if not put to the sword but for all their strength in terms of the bond of friendship Robert would not agree to any of it not when Tywin now held so much influence over him and the Iron Throne finally. Ned had enough of Robert's stubbornness and left King's. Landing with his own army back to the north following the grand wedding between Robert and his new wife Cersei Lannister when Ned was leaving with his army back home Naruto had kept himself hidden from everyone until now and spoke to the Lord of the North about the questionable actions of his most trusted friend now King of the Seven Kingdoms after the sacking of King's Landing Ned had tried to justify Robert's refusals to punish the three so-called knights but the excuses themselves were weak. Even when explained to Naruto and the sage shook his head at Ned's own stubbornness but at least Ned knew what Tywin's mad dogs did was wrong and should be punished for it sadly the Ned did not have the strength of will to act on it so long as Robert sat on the throne and swore fealty to the man sitting on it Naruto of course told Ned that a true test of a man is to give him power and see what he does with it only time would tell what Robert would do, on the seat of power and who around him would seek to manipulate the man with it fortunately John Aaron of the Vale was named Hand of the King and helped raise both Robert and Ned properly growing up at the very least Robert's rule was off to good start on some level with John Aaron being in the second highest position below royal authority but that wasn't why Naruto was having problems with Ned when they met a second and third time to ask for the man's aid one was to help deal with the Greyjoy rebellion and the second was to help Ned's supposed bastard son Jon Snow survived the pox Naruto had no problem saving Jon but the Greyjoy rebellion was going to be a one-sided fight and he knew that Ned knew it too still Ned had persisted with him regarding House Greyjoy who at first went unopposed by the Seven Kingdoms since no one knew it was coming until it was too late many had suffered when the Greyjoys attacked raiding pillaging raping kidnapping and torching everything in sight eventually Ned wore Naruto down and he agreed to help end the war quickly but the sage told him not to call upon him for anything after the Greyjoys were put down by the time Robert got a fleet ready to sail for the Iron Islands to end the rebellion against him Naruto was already halfway there walking on water cutting a bloody path through the Greyjoy fleet with just Kubikiribocho it was at that point in time the demon sage as he had been called by the many barbs following Robert's rebellion, spoken songs had soon given him the title the Demon Sage who made the drowning god bleed given just how many men died single-handedly by Naruto's hands when Robert Ned Stannis and their army slash fleet made it to the Iron Islands and the pike itself where Balan Greyjoy of House Greyjoy lived Naruto had done a great deal of damage to the man's home well over half the army representing the Iron Islanders had fallen by his skills alone Balan's own first and second born sons, being chief among them with Naruto's sword slicing them in half in fact. Only Balan's third son Theon and only daughter Yara Greyjoy were the last two remaining children left the man had that were still alive to make it even worse for Balan on a personal level Theon was being taken as Ned's ward back to Winterfell to keep the Greyjoys from making another attempt and for Ned see that at least one of the Greyjoys didn't act like the rest in regards to their house motto of we do not so. When the boy was old enough to become his own man and now here Ned was again a fourth time damn it Ned I know you're there don't knock just come and take off your boots and meet me in the living area exclaimed Naruto to Ned who was about to knock on the door of the sage's house I will never understand how he knows I'm here thought Ned as he was stupefied all the other times Naruto knew of his arrival and figured it was one of the man's abilities yet to be disclosed still. Ned did as he was told by Naruto and eventually made his way to the living area of the house where Naruto was found to be sitting on the long far side of the table waiting for his guest though like before when Ned came to ask for his assistance regarding the Greyjoy rebellion the sage in front of him was not happy and it showed in his eyes all three of his eyes no less Ned still didn't know how Naruto's two blue eyes could change into one red and the other purple with strange designs in each. One part of him didn't want to know and felt it was best not knowing sit down Ned and tell me your worries or problems grumbled Naruto while looking at some kind of game board with pieces already on it from what Ned could surmise the game had been played for a while by Naruto along with someone else though who that someone was the Lord of the North had no clue again he didn't want to know and decided not to ask despite Naruto looking so focused on the board game himself I need your help Naruto I I'm in need your advice your very counsel on something of great importance said Ned with worry and concern in his voice and eyes the last time you spoke this way it was to ask for my help to save John from the pox he got somehow when he was a mere boy remarked Naruto with Ned nodding since he had remembered that fateful day it was the day he revealed the truth to his wife about John not being his bastard son but his late sister's son flashback Winterfell, many years ago Caitlin Tully Stark.
sometimes called Cat for short sat in a chair right beside the bed of Jon Snow bastard child of her husband Ned Stark she had been beside herself when the boy had gotten sick her prayer to the old gods and even the seven to have the boy not of her blood but of her husband's through infidelity to perish from this world had hit her hard with guilt she had wanted an innocent child to die because he was the progeny of her husband, and a woman whose memory Caitlin herself despised for seducing the man she married into breaking his oath to be faithful but she had no idea her prayers would be answered in such a way whether by the old gods or the seven with their own rules in regards to such sin against the oath of marriage to have an innocent child die simply because of her own spite was not something befitting of a Stark or a Tully and Caitlin was both in that regard so she had prayed again prayed to them all again the old gods, the seven she was had been praying for the pox to go away to cure the boy of the disease and let him live no sooner had she made the prayer and the promises attached to it did Naruto arrive with Ned via Kamui the man looked ready to throw up but the sheer willpower and control helped keep him from releasing the contents of his stomach Ned what are you doing here and with him no less questioned Caitlin at seeing her husband appear practically out of thin air with Naruto, who was wearing his mask once more only Ned Roderick and Lewin were worthy of seeing his face at this point in time since they understood his need for privacy he came to help John I asked him to help cure him of the pox answered Ned after he had the strength to speak again while Naruto walked around the bed to the other side to take a good look at John it seems I don't have to do anything the pox is already receding inside of him said Naruto after putting a now glowing green hand on the boy's forehead to scan the boy's illness to see how it was progressing it is asked Ned in shock while Caitlin looked happy about it despite said happiness beginning to wane every few seconds yes recently too though the reason behind it is strange commented Naruto with a frown behind his mask strange in what way asked Ned with a hint of concern in his voice the disease was not defeated by John's own body fighting it he had helped something or someone cured John of his disease continued Naruto, with his skin of the boy showing the pox was now on the retreat and John would be awake sometime. Tomorrow thank the gods whispered Ned while Caitlin nodded in agreement but Naruto wasn't convinced it was something to be joyous about not yet this wasn't some cure made my maester or grand maester know this was divine intervention and the only way divine intervention could happen is if someone prayed hard enough and had put themselves in a binding contract and the only one in the room when Ned and Naruto arrived, was Caitlin Stark what did you do asked Naruto curiously when he turned to look at Cat and saw the woman stiffen at his words Naruto questioned Ned when he saw how the sage looked at his wife with those three piercing eyes I don't know what you mean great sage replied Caitlin respectfully but couldn't keep her eyes on him when she answered don't lie to me Caitlin Tully Stark now is not the time to lie and keep secrets from me when it comes to this matter replied Naruto firmly with Ned frowning further I would appreciate it you didn't question my wife's honor about this Naruto you are a sage of ancient lost forgotten arts but I will not tolerate your words aimed at my wife said Ned fiercely toward the man and I would appreciate it if your wife were being honest with me and with you about the boy being cured what did you promise the old gods and the seven Naruto shot back while still keeping his eyes on Caitlin I don't know what you mean replied Caitlin again while Naruto's three eyes narrowed you prayed for John to be cured of the pox before we arrived the gods of either the old or the seven answered your call you put yourself in a binding contract with them you made a few promises to them important promises promises that if not kept by you will have severe and dire consequences for yourself your husband for house stark and even house tully so what did you promise them caitlin questioned naruto with caitlin going pale at being discovered and it was seen by ned when he looked at her is it true you promised the gods something in return for john's health Returning asked Ned with Caitlin reluctantly nodding I did when you went off to find some means to cure John no doubt seeking him to aid you I prayed to the old gods and to the seven for mercy to save John from the pox answered Caitlin while Naruto leaned down and began to actually sniff the boy like an animal searching for some kind of scent and they answered I almost can't believe that this is great news indeed exclaimed Ned happily since it showed Caitlin was warming up to John despite how things had started out between the two no it's not Ned replied Naruto for Caitlin despite the good news the Lord of the North just received about John what do you mean John is cured by the gods themselves countered Ned while Naruto shook his head you forget Caitlin made a promise to them or rather promises plural as is more than one promise you should be asking yourself just what are those specific promises she had made to them and if it is within your power to see them fulfilled said Naruto with Ned now Looking at Caitlin who looked away from them both what did you promise them Caitlin what did you promise them for John's life being saved by the pox asked Ned when Caitlin was hesitant to answer I promised I would push for you to legitimize John to become a Stark and that I would raise John as if he was my own son my own child answered Caitlin at last while Ned looked at her in shock before hugging her I had no idea. I'm sorry my love I didn't mean to burden you so much whispered Ned while he 
held her close to him only for Naruto to laugh and shake his head at them you shouldn't embrace her so suddenly Ned not after what I just found replied Naruto while he was done examining a still sleeping John why Caitlin will keep her promise and I will help her in any way I can said Ned as he still held his wife close and scowled slightly at the sage I don't know about that first part but what I do know is John got sick because the boy was given the pox by the same gods that cured him and the only reason they would do that is if someone prayed to them to kill him replied Naruto while giving Ned a pointed look before they went to Caitlin no no I won't believe it stated Ned with Naruto shaking his head believe what you will Ned Stark but I know what I sense and smell on John the same gods that cured him of the pox gave him the pox and they only cured him because they were moved by Caitlin's words and the agreement she made to them she bound herself your children and basically your two houses into this agreement of promises made promises I suspect she would not have kept and would never told you about in the first place remarked Naruto while Ned looked at Caitlin and could tell from the way his wife could look back into his eyes that the sage spoke the truth Caitlin why why would you wish why would you pray for John to die to be given the pox he is his innocent child questioned Ned while Caitlin began to cry and had a fierce look in her eyes because I hated what he represented Ned you rode off to war to fight the mad king I accepted it given what happened with your family men go off to war fight each other kill each other when you came back I was so happy to see you had retuned alive and still whole despite knowing a piece of you that I couldn't see was lost in the process but when you also brought back John and called him your bastard I couldn't stand for it I did not want to stand for it you made an oath to me when we married Ned Stark a sacred oath to be faithful to me and to never lay with another woman so long as I was alive the boy was living breathing proof of you having broken your sacred oath to me every day I watched John grow and the constant reminder of your infidelity so yes I prayed for John to die to be struck down in some manner and let his continued existence that was your very shame haunt me no longer confessed Caitlin as she felt the need to hold back no longer possible and just air out what her heart screamed to be said but that changed when he got the pox surmised Ned with Caitlin nodding I hated John or rather I hated the woman who brought him into the world I hated the fact you laid with a woman who wasn't me and gave birth to this child of your blood but not my own I wanted John to die but not by means of the pox a riding accident falling down the stairs a Lose rock from the tower striking him on the head a quick death is what I wanted Ned not the pox not something that would cause an innocent child even a bastard such as yours to suffer when I realized what I had done to put John through this suffering the guilt I felt over it shamed me greatly I am a tully by blood you know our house motto is family duty honor deep down I knew what I had done to John and his possible death when against all those things my house stands for so I prayed I prayed that the pox would be removed and I would be given a chance to remove such dishonor from myself and my house but even though John has been cured of the pox by the gods whether by the old or by the seven themselves part of me does not want to honor my promise to them answered Caitlin while Ned looked at her in shock and Naruto sighed you have to honor it Caitlin you must if you don't both of our houses will suffer for it our children will suffer exclaimed Ned while Caitlin nodded but it was clear she was still angry with him it would not be this way had you kept your vows Ned Stark and not sired a bastard with some woman I will never know for years I have lived with the fact there was a woman with no face to her name that I can openly hate and the closest person I am capable of hating for your crime is in this bed recovering from the disease my anger and prayers put into him said Caitlin with Ned looking away in shame since he knew this was partially his fault again Naruto laughed at them both damn it Ned when you fuck up something big you fuck up something big remarked Naruto while moving away from John and sitting in another chair near the door what do you mean asked Ned with Naruto giving him a pointed you damn well know what I mean look that told the Lord of the North he knew the truth about John what do you think I mean Ned honestly I know you made a promise to your sister but I think in this case you can let Caitlin in on the secret replied Naruto with Ned glaring at him and Caitlin looking at the two in confusion what promised Ned what is he talking about what secret have you been keeping from me about your sister Lyanna asked Caitlin while Ned was hesitant to answer it is not something I wish to tell it's not that I don't want to tell you cat but I fear the eyes and ears of the walls around us in Winterfell will be listening when I do not want them to listen replied Ned while Caitlin was confused if you are worried about someone overhearing what they shouldn't said Naruto lazily before smashing his monk staff on the ground and the room was soon covered in lines upon lines of Fuenjutsu Ned asked Caitlin worriedly while seeing the line of Fuenjutsu on the walls and was a bit frightened by it relax Caitlin Naruto is just ensuring no one overhears us in this room right said Ned with Naruto nodding that's correct no one outside of this room will have the ability to see or hear anything that goes on in here so go on Ned tell her what you couldn't 
After coming back from the war against the Mad King about John said Naruto with Ned taking in and letting out a long breath before he readied himself to reveal his secret John is not my bastard he's not my son said Ned while he looked Caitlin in the eyes with his wife looking at him in shock if he's not your son or bastard then who is his mother who is the father asked Caitlin while Ned looked at Naruto who nodded to him to continue he's lying his child John is not a snow he has the blood of a Stark and Targaryen in his veins replied Ned with Caitlyn gasping in shock Lyanna's child and of Targaryen blood too but that would mean Rhaegar he violated her said Cat in shock with Ned shaking his head while Naruto rolled his eyes no she was not raped she wasn't even kidnapped by Rhaegar like I first thought my sister went with him willingly you remember the tournament from which he won and proclaimed Lyanna the queen of beauty in front of everyone there even in front of Elia Martell herself. Everyone was shocked by what he had done but despite that my sister actually accepted it and was not appalled by his actions as I thought she would be upon being given the title given it was from a married man in truth Lyanna had fallen in love with Rhaegar and went with him in secret to Dorne at the Tower of Joy where they had eloped the rules of marriage and Dorne are much more open there and thus allowed the marriage to be legal, despite the secrecy said Ned while Caitlin looked at him shock. How do you know all of this asked Caitlin with Ned closing his eyes for a second and recalling the memory because Lyanna told me this right before her death after bringing John into the world Lyanna died shortly after from too much blood loss I promised her I would protect John from his future enemies I swore it on my honor as a Stark and so I hid John's true identity from everyone else even the name of the woman I supposedly laid with his false willow was the closest name I could think of at the Time to keep both Robert or Tywin Lannister from knowing the truth when they saw him for the first time when I told them he was my bastard replied Ned with Caitlin looking at her husband with a frown at the last part Tywin Lannister I can understand given his betrayal to the Mad King but Robert why would you wish to protect John from Robert John as Lyanna's son stated Caitlin since he knew how much the man loved Ned's sister she was the reason Robert went to war in the first place because Robert's hatred for House Targaryen in general is sadly far greater than his own love for Lyanna Stark said Ned before he told her about Robert approving what Gregor Clegane and Amory Lorch did to Elia Martell after they killed her children and add in John as Rhaegar Targaryen's child from his time with Lyanna and Dorne would make Robert see red and smash their child to pieces with his war hammer added Naruto since he knew it was true, but John as Lyanna's child protested Caitlyn while Ned shook his Head and Rhaegar is John's father Lyanna loved Rhaegar not Robert if Robert ever found out the truth he would have realized his reasons for war were based on a lie a love that would not be returned by her in the slightest he would have killed John in a heartbeat I know he would have done it himself without a hint of mercy or regret so when the time came to pass John off as my bastard in the hopes of saving Lyanna's legacy. I provided a story of how I was drunk after Lyanna's death in the Tower of Joy and had surrendered myself to a night of passion with a woman I did not truly know Robert didn't even think I would deceive him with my lie and didn't even question it if anything he was amused by the idea I would do such a thing and joked how the one time can be the most damning given my marriage to you Tylen. I know would have questioned John's birth more closely if not for the noticeable fact John's own Stark. Features are too strong to say he is anything else but a Stark explained Ned with Caitlin looking from him to John and began to cry I don't believe it I almost killed Lyanna's child oh by the old gods and the new what have I done said Caitlin before she hugged her husband and cried into his chest you prayed he would live cat that is enough replied Ned while holding her close not quite Ned she still has a promise to keep two of them if I remember correctly said Naruto while he glanced from the Two and over to John's sleeping form I you are right Naruto we need to keep those two promises Caitlin made one does not make promises to the old gods or the seven and come out of them unscathed said Ned while the man looked at Caitlin but she was clearly worried but how the only way to get John legitimized is to ask Robert to make it a royal decree with the backing of the high septon if you were to find out about John's true heritage being part Targaryen said Caitlin while the image of John now being killed by Robert's war hammer making her cringe he won't know I won't tell him about John being part Targaryen he's being legitimized as a Stark if Robert or the High Septon ask I will tell them John became ill with the pox and you prayed to the gods to save his life how they answered when you promised to help me legitimize him as a Stark I can have countless witnesses testify to John having the pox and Maester Lewin confirmed John was near death Robert knows I would never lie to him about such a thing in the High Septon could easily claim what happened to John being cured was the act of the Seven said Ned since he knew Robert would do this for him if asked and with the evidence of the gods acting on John's behalf would be perfect to make him a Stark like he should have been from the start but what about Cersei Robert's wife she's a Lannister I have heard about that woman and how she acts around others seeking to strengthen her house that woman will fight Robert tooth and nail to keep 
John Abaster replied Caitlin with Ned grimace since he had heard the same about the woman being a very possessive woman when it came to the coveting of power she's not wrong Ned Cersei will see this as an attack on House Lannister's power base in the Western Lands and on the Iron Throne added Naruto since he knew what Cersei did to poor Maggie the Frog when the Wood Witch and his last true disciple all those years ago, during his travels throughout the world even prior to when Ned found him had hidden herself away on Lannister lands Naruto had warned Maggie about trying to use her power he taught to look into the future was dangerous for anyone to openly know about naturally Maggie had decided to ignore him and do it anyway which was a shame since Maggie had such potential and it was rare for him to see such potential during his travels throughout Essos sadly Maggie got into some major trouble with some highly wealthy and equally powerful people there with the use of her fortune telling. As such she had to flee Essos and arrive in Westeros where she believed the woods near Casterly Rock would be safe to live in at least until Cersei came along and took the description of her future personally when the answers to the questions Maggie gave her were not the ones she wanted Cersei had repaid Maggie for her fortune telling by having the wood witch killed violently under the premise of living unlawfully on Lannister lands even Queen Cersei cannot stop the High Septon from acknowledging. What happened to John was divine intervention and the binding promise my maid replied Ned knowing he would have some trouble in the future with Cersei and make Robert's life difficult in the process when asking to legitimize John as a Stark but that was the life of a king well if I'm no longer needed here I will take my leave and entrust the future John Stark to your loving care once more said Naruto before giving a mock salute, removed the lines of Fuenjutsu from the walls and vanished from there. Sight via Kamui I will never get used to seeing that remarked Caitlin with Ned smirking you should try traveling in that manner joke Ned since the trip from the sage's house to Winterfell nearly made him vomit I think I will pass replied Caitlin before she smiled and sat down in the chair next to Jon Snow who would soon become a true member of the family and Caitlin Tully Stark would do what she should have done from the start with young Jon, when brought home by Ned she was going to love him as. If you were her own child end of flashback I have seen some disturbing signs as of late signs by the gods themselves of something threatening my house and I received word by Raven from King's Landing informing of John Aaron's death at the same time Caitlin got a message from her sister Lisa stating the Lannisters were responsible for his death by poison and had fled to the Vale with their only son Robin said Ned with Naruto sighing a long sigh and continued to smoke from his pipe while his eyes we're still on the board game I take it that's not all that's got you spooked Ned those instances were by the hands of mortals not gods remarked Naruto with Ned nodding though his face got increasingly worried I was out in the woods hunting with my sons John and Theon we noticed a dead female dire wolf near a stream she had been killed by the stag in a fight with the antlers of the stag in her throat at the same time we noticed a litter of dire wolf pups and realized the female dire wolf had somehow given birth despite her death each pup has been claimed by a member of my family but it speaks ill to me since the dire wolf is the symbol of my house replied ned with naruto nodding since that did seem a bit odd in his mind and you want me to try interpreting the signs correctly to see if all these signs of gods and men are a combination of something bigger aimed against house stark surmised naruto with ned nodding i would greatly appreciate it i know i am asking much from you for Doing this for me when you wish to be left alone especially after the issue with House Bolton five years ago said Ned with Naruto giving him a pointed you should have kept a better eye on them type of look after the Greyjoy rebellion I made it clear to Robert Eustanis and just about every other house on the war path that I wanted to be left alone Robert didn't care by this point since he found out from his younger brother Stannis that I prevented him from capturing and killing both Viserys and Daenerys Targaryen during his own rebellion back when the two Targaryens were still just children on their ship fleeing Dragonstone for Essos he couldn't punish me so Stannis was his next best target and as for House Bolton the greedy asshole and his bastard son should have left me alone like everybody else stated Naruto angrily as he had been content being in his home alone and in blissful solitude, away from the violence of the world only for Roos Bolton and his bastard son Ramsay Snow too pay him a visit to ask for his help in giving them both similar powers to increase the greatness of House Bolton Roos had made it no secret to him that he was not happy being under the thumb of House Stark and wanted to become the new Warden of the North he had tried to appeal to Naruto to see his point of view on how the North was getting soft and weak under the rule of House Stark Roos wanted his house to rise up and become the rulers of the North and control it with an iron fist that was not afraid to flay those who defied him instead of sending them to the wall Naruto had told Roos no in regards to taking down House Stark so House Bolton could rise simply on the reason the man speaking to him was an idiot a greedy idiot who had long since enjoyed hurting people and wanted to make his practices legal after Ned Stark made the very thing House Bolton was known for illegal. 
Naruto explained to Roos that his power was not transferable to others even if it was possible Naruto had no intention of transferring any such power over to such a sadistic asshole like Roos much less his evil bastard spawn Ramsey and yes Naruto had told Roos and Ramsey those very same words to their faces they didn't take his words well this was proven roughly a week later when Roos and Ramsey came back with the most elite men from their house who shared in the same sadistic tendencies. All of which surrounded flaying torture raping someone regardless of their gender and all around killing anyone simply because they all believed it was their right as members of House Bolton in fact Roos's banner men were people who were sadistic cruel and were not afraid to betray a fellow northerner or anyone else if given the chance or command by Roos himself sadistic bastards both figuratively and in some cases literally. Each man had brought their own set of weapons and skills to take. Naruto down so they could find out how to get the power of the sage out of him so they could have it with this powerhouse Bolton would rise up and become the dominant power in the north and maybe even all of the seven kingdoms Roos and Ramsey of course failed to realize that Naruto was not one to face threats from his pawns and simply cower in fear of them he had seen worse odds in terms of numbers aimed against him he had faced worse odds, aimed against him worse opponents too in the form of the White Walkers ages ago long past when Bran the Builder asked him for his help in keeping everything beyond the giant wall of ice at bay from reaching the rest of the Seven Kingdoms if only the people knew it wasn't magic keeping the ice on the wall from melting but the nature chakra itself infused into it in any case Naruto saw the small army of 200 men plus Roos and Ramsey among them sporting weapons and bloodlust, filled looks aimed at his person Roos believed he had the edge despite. Naruto's legendary skills in killing well over 10 times as many men as Roos brought with him taunting Naruto while calling the sage an idiot for not giving him and his bastard what they wanted saying how when they claimed his secrets all of House Bolton would claim his power and the north would fall under his gentle hands with the way it was spoken making the men around him chuckle it stopped when Naruto let out a chuckle of amusement flashback. Five years ago you find something amusing about. My words oh great sage mocked Roos Bolton at the sight of Naruto surrounded on all sides by his men no I just find it terribly amusing and sad how after so many years of being alive to see one age after the next I find the human race is still filled with greedy power hungry cock sucking morons greedy power hungry cock sucking moron like you your son and all these men who follow you so blindly it's people like you that makes me wish the white walkers would come back and kill every single fucking human and bring about their endless winter maybe then I get some proper sleep at night and not have to worry about whether or not humans are worth saving anymore Naruto mocked back and saw Bolton men looking infuriated by his words Ramsey especially took major offense to that despite being so young and didn't like it when anyone talked back to him even his father when being taught by the man but the boy wanted said father's approval despite being a bastard and thus listened to him every chance he could still when you are a boy who gets off on the suffering of others and have done so in the past it's to be expected how Ned let this one particular family do what it wanted for years was beyond Naruto's understanding kill him bring me his third eye, I want to eat it right in front of him I bet if I do eat it I will gain some form of his power commanded Ramsey angrily while point his sword at Naruto with a mighty roar, and a charge members of House Bolton try to attack Naruto with their greater numbers and supposed skill with their weapons not that it mattered Naruto just had to wait until they were close enough to mutter two simple words with the left eye going from normal blue to purple to show his Rinnegan was now activated Shinra Tensei exclaimed Naruto before hitting the men with a massive blast sending bodies blood and body parts flying everywhere it was a gory end to Roos Bolton's men their blood guts and limbs, covering the snow to taint the pure color of white it would be covered up in an hour due to the snow coming down this year being extra heavy in this part of the north as for Roos and Ramsey they were shocked to see such a minor use of his power killed their banner men in such a violent manner deciding to play as one trump card Ramsey was able to grab a bound girl hidden by the man horses due to being tied horizontally so she wouldn't be seen by him give us your power give us your power or this bitch dies commanded Ramsey while he held the girl close and a blade to her throat no I can't give my power away besides even if I could do that you would just use it to torture everyone in your line of sight for kicks replied Naruto calmly though his tone was just as cold as the winter here in the north of course I would torture people for fun those who have power make the rules I want your power so I can do whatever I want that is what people with power do and I want that power I will have your power or this girl's wonderful blood all over my body is payment for your disobedience exclaimed Ramsey like it was the most natural thing in the world Ramsey is definitely your son despite being a bastard child Roos he takes after you in many ways all the more reason for me to kill you too now and then sack the dread fort to ensure house Bolton can never rise again with any of its men commented Naruto dryly before cracking his neck you won't kill us my son will kill the girl 
and being a sage means all innocent life to you is precious meaning. If you try to kill us she dies too and her death will be on your hands just as much as it will be Ramsey's when he slits her throat remarked Roos in a confident and smug tone are you so sure what if I know she is a part of your plan to make me surrender what if I know for a fact she is not really a hostage but a willing participant in this plot and has gone with Ramsey in the past. On one his many hunts with the various small folk he finds to amuse himself with on a weekly basis do you really? think I care whether this cunt for a sadist who helps you is killed by boy she is so fond of despite knowing she can never be with him when they are older questioned Naruto with Rusa's smile and his confidence fading a bit I will kill her I will kill her to get to your power if she dies the blood will be on your hands exclaimed Ramsey with an insane look in the young boy's eyes actually it won't and since the girl has helped in your little sadistic hunts in the past I don't care whether the girl lives or dies by your hands or by mine either way it does not really matter since none of you are going to make out of this region of the north alive replied Naruto before he moved in a flash and was behind a shocked Roose Bolton before ramming his fist though his back out the man's chest and threw the body away like it was trash considering what the man had done during his time alive it seemed to be quite appropriate to throw him away. In such a manner Ramsey of course was now livid his father was dead any chance of proving his worth to being a legitimized Bolton was now lost to him even after taking steps to forcing his father to consider it in the future by secretly poisoning his half-brother in order to have the man die without the natural born heir Roos would have to legitimize Ramsey in the future to provide House Bolton with an heir at all in a few years time Roos would have had no choice but to make Ramsey a Bolton, but now his death changed that in his rage Ramsey slit the girl's throat much to her horror and shock that the boy she loved would kill her in such a way of course it didn't really matter since Naruto was going to kill her and Ramsey together all this did was quicken her death a few seconds before Ramsey's own which happened when Naruto flashed in front of the bastard and rammed his fist through the brat's face with the force of a sledgehammer the boy's brains were turned into mush and Ramsey himself was dead before hitting the ground letting out a tired sigh Naruto easily made some shadow clones to clean up this mess and proceeded to head for the dread fort like he was going through a stroll in the park it would take some time on foot to reach the dread fort but Naruto felt that was okay since he didn't want to bloody his hands too soon and wanted to enjoy the wondrous beauty of nature that was around him before putting a giant hole where the dread fort had been and filling it with lots and Lots of dead bodies literally end of flashback well Ned the good news is the act of John Aaron is not the will or the wish of any gods watching over Westeros whether they be old gods the seven or any other religion throughout the seven kingdoms that was done by multiple figures currently lurking in the shadows to move pieces into play for their own machination and plays for power replied Naruto at last while staring at the board game, and the bad news asked Ned knowing well enough that the good. News came with bad there are signs from what you told me of some kind of deity working against you not the old gods and not the seven so it's not them especially since I know you and Caitlin kept your promises regarding John after that little talk we all had despite the ripple it sent through Robert's court replied Naruto with a frown and moved a piece forward on the game board but what deity would go against us asked Ned since he didn't think any of the gods worshipped throughout the different realms and seven kingdoms as a whole would seek them harm it's not an actual deity per se it's more of an actual demon from hell who is trying to ascend into becoming a deity by removing all others in the process he has worshippers and esos too blinded by their devotion to him and is considered the lord of light they have there he gets stronger in times of war strife pain and of course burning people alive at the stake with fire of all things so long as it's in his name of course this only makes him stronger if all those things are done in his name the more people are killed slash sacrificed by means of fire in his name the stronger he eventually becomes and wishes to use you as a pawn or stepping stone to one day challenge the other gods via conflict no doubt he has won or will have one of his priests or priestess already in Westeros if not soon enough to begin the conversion process answered Naruto while still smoking his pipe calmly so a demonic false deity is trying to stir trouble for my house in the hopes it will cause problems and make him stronger to combat the other gods surmised Ned with Naruto nodding yes but all the same Ned you need to keep your wits sharp and eyes open in the near future replied Naruto with Ned nodding again but looked hesitant to say something Naruto my wife believes Robert will come up here in the north to Winterfell to name me Hand of the King if that is indeed true and the Lannisters are behind John Aaron's death a sinister plot is being made in the shadows a place for all my skills as a warrior of the north I cannot see in the slightest I know I have no right to ask you this but will you come with me to King's Landing asked Ned with Naruto groan at his request Ned you know I'm not loved by Robert or the Lannisters hell I wouldn't be surprised if the High Septon urged the king to order my execution simply because of my powers and how they are frowned upon by the seven which contrary to what the Septon may tell you is 
100% false The seven don't hate magic they just hate it when people use magic for dark purposes stated Naruto before letting out a sigh. I need you at King's Landing with me if I become the hand of the king there I am not so naive as I once was to believe those surrounding Robert are honorable and will help him protect his kingdom from falling into ruin what you left is proof of House Bolton's treachery. After destroying the Dreadfort was a hard lesson for someone my age and with. My beliefs to learn said Ned since the issue with House Bolton's destruction and the reason behind it by the sage's own hands showed Ned that not everyone in the north was trustworthy say Robert does make you hand of the king who will run Winterfell and the north asked Naruto casually with Ned so focused on him that the warden of the north failed to see a piece on the board move discreetly under his very nose my son Rob can rule over the north in my stead he is my heir after all and John will be able to help him should something happen further north at the wall as a member of the Night's Watch answered Ned since John had talked about taking the black to be with his uncle Ben Jen John going to the wall is fine but as a member of the Night's Watch I would strongly advise against that replied Naruto with Ned frowning why asked Ned curiously since he thought John going willingly was a good thing don't get me wrong John is a good lad and you trained him well to be a good fighter when using a Sword but the fact remains the Night's Watch is not what it once was in days of old it's filled with murders rapists thieves dishonorable scum who go there to avoid being put to the sword those on the wall who are honorable and can keep them in line are either too old or too few in number everyone in the Seven Kingdoms knows John became a legitimized bastard at this point and those of the vile or poor people sent to the wall will look at him with great disdain they'll still see him as a bastard who got lucky in having a loving father for a high lord despite everything else and was given a cushy lifestyle the only type of bastard that is hated even more than a bastard of a high-ranking noble or king is a bastard legitimized by his father and claims what many would say is one he is not meant to have in life those on the wall will not welcome john with open arms ned said naruto with ned frowning at this words i had not thought of that but john wishes to go to the wall and he is old enough to make his own decisions in life I won't try to take away his right to forge his own destiny said Ned with Naruto nodding since he agreed I understand what I'm suggesting is John visit the wall under the pretense of inspecting it for weaknesses and visiting his uncle don't have him take the oath needed to become a member of the Night's Watch not yet anyway if what I have seen so far is anything to go by him as one of its members, will not do you or House Stark well in the future for now just. Have him go as your representative to the wall to see how many men are there and inspect the various defenses before reporting them back here to Rob said Naruto with Ned giving him a reluctant nod John won't like that nod at first anyway remarked Ned with Naruto shaking his head I know just tell him to hold off on making the commitment until after going up there first to make a report on the status of the wall itself, that you want him to get a feel for the wall before swearing his life to it. Replied Naruto with Ned thinking it over before nodding I will talk to him when I get back if anything this will allow John to think about all of his choices before making any decisions said Ned while Naruto smirked at the man that's the idea as for me going with you to King's Landing are you really sure you want me there Robert has no love for me and neither does his wife it may cause quite a bit of friction even before we leave Winterfell for King's Landing questioned Naruto again with Ned. Nodding I know Robert well enough that he will listen to me regarding this one way or another despite his dislike for you on a personal level besides you helped in the securing of his kingship to the Iron Throne more than he is willing to admit replied Ned with Naruto being silent for a moment if he only knew I helped Elia Martell and her children escape from King's Landing alive to Dorn I told the Dornish prince to keep up the facade, they were dead and his side of the Seven Kingdoms was. Stewing angrily over at Prince Dorian has no problem with that since he is the cooler and calm head of the ruling family and Dorn Prince Oberyn is the more aggressive of the two and nearly went to war with just the Lannisters on that alone had I not told him to his actions would only endanger his sister and her children Robert hates all things Targaryen and would have no problem hiring assassins from every corner of the Seven Kingdoms, to kill anyone with Targaryen blood or was married to one so. Long as Robert believes them dead Dorn along with the royal family there are safe from harm and there is still the issue of the Mad King's own children I should probably pay the two a visit or see if either of them inherited their father's madness damn and breeding does more harm than most people even realize thought Naruto while sighing again and looking at the game board before moving another piece Naruto asked Ned while seeing the sage was deep in thought, fuck it I will help you out in. King's Landing Ned but seriously I'm not going to hold your hand while there every damn time you hit a snag from what I know a lot of snakes have been making their nests in King's Landing and the stag no longer has the strength to keep them in line know that Robert ever did in the first place don't be surprised if these snakes plan to strike you at some point where their venom having long lasting effects if bitten warned Naruto with Ned nodding but smiled, all the same thank you my friend I know I. 
I'm asking you for much given how you prefer solitude given your past, but the seven kingdoms and the realm of men need you now more than ever I can only do so much for Robert as Han of the King and I am just one man from the north I cannot see here or understand the language of shadows and deception I am a soldier who fights and kills his enemy on the battlefield where I can stare them in the eyes said Ned with Naruto nodding to him, and watching the warden of the north leave his home after. Shaking his hand in respect while I loathe to come back into the world once again I feel even I have no choice in the matter if what my vision showed me recently to be where the lioness and her cubs who are not true stags to not trust the man with little fingers to ensure the wolf's den is protected from the slumbering kraken should the beast of the ocean realize how empty the den of the wolf truly is when one of its own returns, with such news then the issue of the white walkers and their hatred. For all things alive damn Zetsa clones I thought I had killed you off over a thousands of years ago but it seems you not only survived but changed your body's genetic makeup actually found a way to reproduce and evolved into these abominations the north calls white walkers at least they no longer have that damn kagai as well driving them to do this though now their own is just as bad if not worse said Naruto to himself while more pieces on the board were now moving and he let out another sigh. The pieces among this Game of Thrones were moving once more time skip the king's arrival to Winterfell was imminent already his escort of Kingsguard and the red golden colors indicating Lannister soldiers mixed within it were visible from the high towers of the castle the large carriage in the group held the royal family was seen from the towers of the castle and signaled for the members of House Stark to hurry and present themselves, before the king's arrival into the castle gates quickly Ned was able to get his wife children John and even his ward Theon Greyjoy presentable for when Robert arrived not easy when Ned's youngest of his two daughters Arya Stark was running around trying to be more soldier than Lady Ned's oldest daughter Sansa Stark was ready around the same time as her mother was in being prepared to greet their very important guests as it was what proper women did when around Knights Lords Princes, and of course King's Brandon Stark who was Ned's second eldest child was almost as bad as Arya in running around and worried Caitlyn over his constant desire to climb up stone towers to the highest windows they possessed Naruto found it amusing your encouragement of his climbing is not helping commented Caitlyn with Brandon running off to get ready after he came down to tell his mother up close that Robert and his royal escort were now seeable from the tower he just finished climbing he's a young boy cat, don't hold it against him Bran the builder was the same way. When he asked me to help him make the wall said Naruto with his mask on and saw how some of Ned's children looked at him when he arrived in Winterfell you knew Bran the Builder asked Caitlin and shock I, I did when he was just a boy Brandon loved to climb up things almost as much as he wanted to make them buildings towers castles and anything else that was climbable he wanted to climb including the wall the Night's Watch, sits upon his mother always worried about him when growing up she didn't think his behavior was befitting someone of his station but her mood changed a bit when he began building things of course her mood changed again when he started to climb them to see if they were in fact climbable but that's beside the point in any case I see a lot of your son and him the best thing for Brandon now would be to have him read from the library about some of the things Bran the Builder made, and challenge him to see if he can improve on their designs give him a proper outlet for his energy that is healthy and productive for him answered Naruto before walking to the stable to see how the gentle giant of a man hotter was doing with the dire wolves he was ordered to clean up father is that masked fellow really the sage you told us about when we were younger and fighting in King Robert's rebellion asked Sansa while glancing where the long haired masked man walked I he is indeed the sage I told you about the one who helped Robert and myself during the rebellions answered Ned. While making sure his children and John were all presentable he doesn't look so tough remarked Arya gruffly with a scowl with her eyes watching Naruto too but she was more fascinated by the man's supposed ability to crush all of his enemies with a single hand gesture or swing of the many swords in his possession you haven't seen him fight Arya, and I pray you never do many lives fell at his feet with a single swing of a sword of choice on hand he possesses replied Ned since he had seen Naruto fight both with swords magic and hand to hand combat none of which he would wish on his worst enemy not even the mad king do you think we could best him in a fight father all three of us together asked Rob curiously with John looking at his father too sadly I do not believe it is possible Rob not even on our best day and him at his worst could we best someone like the sage in combat said Ned with Roderick standing beside the family and nodding in agreement I, I have seen the man fight all by himself alone against entire armies he wiped out his foes by the hundreds if not the thousands whole lines of banner men ran at the mere sight of the sage he soon became more feared by the enemy than even the mad king commented Roderick since he had seen what Ned did when the sage fought against the Targaryens do you think he would honor us with a spar I would still love to fight against someone of his strength asked John, since he heard from his parents how the sage had helped get him legitimize. 
As a Stark of course he had been told the truth behind his parentage just a few years ago when he was mature enough to understand things even still John considered both Ned and even Caitlin Stark his parents they raised him loved him sure Caitlin took a while in her warming up to him but that was before she learned the truth and on some level he even understood her initial dislike of him maybe if you ask politely treat him with respect and he will return it offered Ned since Naruto was like that. With people it didn't matter if you were the small folk or not king or not lord or not bastard or not you treat the man with respect you will return it and then some so long as you continue to stay respectful the king is approaching whispered Caitlin before any more could be spoken further about Naruto from her family sure enough King Robert Baratheon had arrived first on horseback with his escort right behind him it took him some effort to get off of his horse because his rounded size made it difficult to get off the poor animal Arya had to hold back her laughter that had wanted to come out at seeing the king and Caitlyn sent her a glare to be respectful though the woman herself did have to fight back her own smirk for a brief second your grace said Ned while bowing in front of Robert who was appraising the man with a frown you've gotten fat remarked Robert while Ned looked up at the king from his position with Aryu's serious look on his face after glancing at Robert's girth before the two erupted in laughter and hugged in brotherly friendship it's good to see you Robert said Ned while Robert nodded it's good to see you too Ned damn it's been a long time remarked Robert in an almost afterthought kind of way I've been taking care of Winterfell for you the north is yours after all replied Ned as he motioned for Robert to see his family so this is the young brood of Starks you have sired since being here in Winterfell quite a strong bunch the lot of them said Robert while appraising each one from Rob to John to Sansa all the way to young Rick and Stark yes each one worthy of their house name and then some I made sure of that replied Ned with pride in his voice while seeing Robert looking impressed while shocked to see they had actual dire wolves being raised within the castle walls actual dire wolves I didn't think they lived this far south I know your house sigil is the dire wolf Ned but this is taking it to another level joked Robert with a chuckle and glanced at each dire wolf now being attended to by their assigned owners it was also a surprise to us too when we found them all as pups that day it seems was not that long ago I took it as a sign from the gods to bring them into our house to be raised by my children one for each replied Ned while leaving out how the female dire wolf that birthed them died in a fight with a stag they do grow up big they well trained asked Robert with Ned nodding as trained as dire wolves can be trained we treat them with respect and make sure they hunt in the woods so they don't let their natural instincts to hunt for food turn on us like my wife fears answered Ned with Robert laughing at that last part one bet cat gets scared half the time seeing them sneak up on her or walking down the hall when she least expects it remarked Robert with a smile before frowning when he sees one person coming toward them king. Robert it's been some time commented Naruto while many of the Kingsguard and Lannister men quickly went for their weapons much to the surprise of Cersei Joffrey Tommen and Rosella when they got out of the carriage to see Robert had been talking to his old friend what the fuck are you doing here asked Robert coldly since while keeping his voice down so his children didn't hear him we have much to talk about your grace things that must be spoken in private replied Ned seriously while Robert looked from Naruto to Ned and back again to Naruto before nodding fine let's go to the crypt and pay my respects we can talk after about these important things of yours afterwards I have to talk to you anyway about important matters of my own said Robert with a hint of anger in his voice Robert my love surely the dead can wait we only just arrived and everyone is tired said Cersei while glancing from Robert to Naruto with a hint of curiosity in her eyes now Ned you too Naruto commanded Robert with Ned glancing at the queen with an apologetic look on his face before sending a look to Caitlyn to go help entertain their royal guests as best she could dog who was that masked man just now the one that has upset my father so much asked Joffrey with the giant of a man with half his face burned named dog glancing down at the prince and heir to the iron throne if what my memory about his appearance is true young prince he is the one called the demon sage and the one who helped your father take the Iron Throne he also helped your father keep it when putting down the Greyjoys in the Greyjoy Rebellion the bards still sing the tale of how the man walked on water and cut through the sea with his sword that many say made the drowning god bleed answered dog while finding he had his own hand gripping his sword on instinct at the mere sight of the sage oh come now hound such stories about him are for the bards to tell in song at bars and the women to speak about the infamous demon sage to their children in order to make them behave said Jamie Lannister while not believing for one second the stories about the masked man despite the fact the stories came from his own father and his father was never one to lie but even Jamie felt such stories from the aging lion were far-fetched in some places whereas the imp asked Arya curiously and suddenly since she had wanted to see the lowest and equally the shortest member on the house Lannister pole Arya behave yourself that is no way for 
a lady to act Caitlin said in a reprimanding tone while glancing at Cersei with I'm sorry look on her face it's quite all right Lady Stark my brother has that effect on people no matter their status in life my brother Jamie will find him and hopefully be presentable to your family when the time comes said Cersei while sending Jamie a find your brother or else look that the man knew all too well while the two families mingled together with Tommen and Marcella, actually enjoying their time with the Stark children and even their dire wolves another conversation was brewing below Winterfell House Stark crypt tell me about John Aaron how did he die asked Ned while Robert walked over to Lyanna's statue damnedest thing Ned one moment he was fine and then the next a fever burned right through him whatever it was that did him and I love that man said Robert mournfully while thinking back to the many years John had raised him and Ned under his care we all did he was a second father to us both replied Ned with Robert nodding in full agreement I need you in King's Landing Ned not here in the north freezing your ass off where you can do little to no good with John Aaron gone I'm going to be up to my ass in problems granted I already am up to my ass in problems but John usually handled them all for me while I did other things I would name you hand of the king remarked Robert after paying his respects to Lyanna in the crypt and refused to say what the other things were in her presence as hand of the king I will do what I can your grace though I don't think I'm worthy of the title and rank you honor me with said Ned before kneeling and Robert scoffed at him get on your damn feet Ned I'm not trying to honor you I'm trying to get you to run my kingdom while I eat drink and whore my way to an early grave said Robert with a small smile before it became a frown and glanced at Naruto who had kept silent during this whole event considering the state of himself it's a distinct possibility of that happening sooner rather than later thought Naruto before glancing at Ned and gave a brief nod you helped me win the Iron Throne now help me keep the damn thing we were meant to rule together complications just prevented it back then we were young and still strong men damn it Ned if your sister had lived we would have been bound in blood still it's not too late for that I have a boy you have a daughter around his age we can still join our houses together before we're too old and die to see it happen offered Robert with Ned thinking it over but a quick glance from Naruto shaking his head with a think about it later look before shooting a glance over at the king it is a great honor to be sure and I will talk to my wife about it first and with a great deal of thought before making a final decision in the near future Robert however one of the things I wanted to discuss was you was in fact my appointment as hand of the king you see my wife actually assumed you would make me the hand after John Aaron's death as such I will need some leeway from you regarding one of the things I need to do in order to fulfill my duty said Ned while Robert now focused back on him what leeway you're the fucking hand of the king short of putting my foot down on an issue you can do just about any fucking thing you want exclaimed Robert before narrowing his eyes suspiciously and glanced again over at Naruto the leeway I'm speaking of is to allow me to enlist Naruto to aid me during my time in King's Landing is the hand said Ned while Robert looked livid at his request no never no fucking way will I allow this dragon lover to enter King's Landing ever again not after he allowed the mad king's own seven damn children to escape my brother's fleet exclaimed Robert angrily while glaring at Naruto and Elia Martel and her children but you don't need to know that thought Naruto with a small hand of amusement and wondered if the man would literally explode with rage at hearing such a thing a most he'd probably have a heart attack but Naruto could save his life provided the man didn't try to have him killed or imprisoned soon after they were children Robert innocent children stated Ned angrily since he had this one conversation beforehand they were in our Targaryens the only good Targaryens are dead ones stated Robert angrily as he huffed and puffed but stopped to look at Lyanna before calming down I need Naruto with me in King's Landing you know I do want me to be the hand of the king and I will accept but only if you allow him to aid me in my duties and my own personal quest to find out who killed John Aaron said Ned with Robert frowning at him killed John Aaron the man died of natural causes said Robert in confusion John's wife says differently she sent a letter to Kat shortly following your own and says he was killed by the Lannisters possibly over a damaging secret they want kept hidden said Ned before showing Robert the message the ranting end ravings of a deeply crazed and paranoid woman her son is now what six years old and she still has him sucking on her tits for milk besides even if what she said was true which is a big if why would they kill John it's too risky even for them and the Lannisters gain nothing from his death and we all know the Lannisters would only do something like this to gain something else back in return without being connected to it countered Robert since he knew how Tywin and House Lannister worked in terms of their actions you don't think they would do this because normally they do such a thing for monetary or political advantages over their rivals but what if this wasn't to gain an advantage but to prevent something else entirely from happening questioned Naruto at last while he saw Robert scowling at him and what would they be preventing with John's Aaron's death after all these years if anything after I legitimized Ned's former bastard I thought Cersei would hire a small army of assassins to kill 
Your boy Ned she bitched at me day and night for that said Robert since he had gotten quite an earful from Cersei on the issue that I do not know Robert but deep down you know John's death was suspicious I may not have been King's Landing when it happened but my instincts tell me it was foul play and whether the Lannisters are involved or not we owe it to John to find out he raised us both when we're just children I want to honor and protect his memory Robert the first want to find whoever killed him if he was killed and bring the murder or murders to justice said Ned while Robert sighed and looked over at Lyanna's statue again I you are right John was a good man the best surrogate father an old drunken fool like me could ever have had in life when I became king I instantly knew he was the perfect man for the job as hand I would have appointed you but the north required a Stark stay there and your brother had taken the black so he couldn't rule over the north in your place a Stark must always be in Winterfell and the North to rule over it that's the old saying right now that two of your sons are full grown it seems the gods have seen fit to give me a younger and stronger hand capable of helping me run the kingdom all the while the North has a young Abel Stark to replace you said Robert with Ned nodding but saw the king wasn't happy with the sage being a part of their group when returning to King's Landing I know you don't like Naruto for his past actions Robert but for Lyanna's soul for John's soul and our friendship I ask you let the grudge against him go said Ned with Robert waving his hand in a gesture saying he would let it go reluctantly do what you have to do Ned I will do what I do best when I don't like how things turn out you best have your servants bring out the finest wine in your cellar I think I'm going to actually drink myself to death this time replied Robert while walking out of the crypt without another word on the matter well that went as expected remarked Naruto with his arms crossed in front of him with his monk staff in hand I though I suggest keeping clear of Robert tonight when the feast begins even more when the wine starts being poured things will be said by him that he won't take back said Ned in a warning to Naruto who shrugged Robert's words don't and won't bother me Ned I have heard them all before since I was a child it's nothing new to me said Naruto before patting the man on the shoulder and walked out of the crypt Winterfell. Dining hall the festivities were soon underway and the feast was brought out for all to eat and enjoy with plenty of wine to go around Robert was already halfway drunk and his arm around the waist of a girl he intended to no doubt bed later on much to his wife's ire at seeing him already in the mood to break his oath to be faithful to her yet again for what felt like the 100th time this month alone off to the side she saw Jamie was standing guard as was his duty and noticed their little brother Tyrion who she hated with a deep dark passion was nowhere to be found no doubt the little monster went to a brothel after acquiring some wine in his skin for the long walk over to one thought Cersei angrily since she would have loved to have him be a target for her drunk husband to speak about in a humiliating way in front of the Starks inwardly Cersei hated Winterfell she hated the north always cold always windy to further make the cold bite her skin harder than usual barbarians the whole lot of them with the need for animal fur to stay warm and living off the land for what food they can get in the process why would anyone want to live here and enjoy it Caitlin Stark was truly an oddball for living here in Winterfell she didn't understand how a woman from Riverrun would want to leave a moderately warm place for this cold abysmal land here in the north of course it might have been due to Cersei living a life of luxury at Casterly Rock in the west and being the daughter of Tywin Lannister that prevented her from seeing the truth still the woman's pride as a Lannister and wanting to be waited on every day as queen was no doubt another thing blinding her from the truth glancing over at her children she saw Joffrey talking with Sansa Stark and trying to woo the girl with his boyish charms. On one hand the Cersei was happy for her eldest child taking an interest in a girl as pretty as Sansa it showed he didn't have any weird tastes like Robert's youngest brother Renly who was rumored to have other tastes and all centered around men of the reach but at the same time the wood which Maggie the Frog appeared in her mind with those words about the new more beautiful queen taking over and casting Cersei down from her position of power added to the fact her children would all die before her one by one did not help in matters either since she didn't know how they would die stabbing poisoning whatever the source Cersei was not about to have her children die before her or this new queen take the Iron Throne along with the power that came with it she wouldn't allow that outside the great dining hall of Winterfell one John Stark was practicing with his sword and found himself improving greatly every day he sparred with his brother Rob and the two were nearly evenly matched both men knew the truth behind John's parentage as Ned felt Rob should know as well as John so the two could have the others back when in trouble Rob instantly understood why John's heritage had been kept a secret since he had heard the stories behind his aunt's kidnapping and death at the Tower of Joy had sent Robert into a rage at what happened to Elia Martell and her children simply for being with the Targaryens by blood and marriage with King Robert approving of the actions leading up to their deaths all the more reason to protect John from harm at least until Robert's hatred for the Targaryens died with him impressive John, very impressive remarked Naruto while walking over to 
The young man with wolf and dragon's blood in his veins thank you a great sage replied John since he didn't know how else to address the masked man in front of him and felt it best to use his title in terms of giving out proper respect just call me Naruto a sage I may be but great I most certainly not replied Naruto with amusement in his voice and John let out a chuckle not to be direct but is it true how you vanquished so many of your enemies with your magic and different sorts asked john with naruto cocking his head slightly to the right for a second i see the bards still sing my name and deeds in the rebellions after all this time you would think they had other tales to tell in brothels and bars but to answer your question yes i did kill several thousand people with one swing of my sword replied naruto with john looking at him in awe how is such a thing possible asked john almost immediately training dear boy lots and lots of intense bone breaking Training with a long lifespan beyond what any mortal man in existence has today to match answer Naruto with a hint of sadness in them since he had seen all his loved ones die out and missed them each one dearly could you could you teach me nothing magical mind you but maybe some of the skills that made you such a great swordsman asked John while hoping the man would say yes and he could get Robin on this later before the man went off with Ned, to King's Landing I don't see why not so long as. You are not going to ask me to give you any of my power or something like that Roos Bolton already tried that years ago along with his bastard son Ramsey and we all know what happened to their house said Naruto before putting his staff down and went to the sword rack I wouldn't dream of it said John with a smile since he doubted his body could handle such power or he was worthy of being given it in the first place good let's begin said Naruto, while the two now circled the other and slowly. Drawing in a crowd John moved first after a while he deduced rather quickly enough that Naruto wasn't going to make the first move so making the first move was the only thing John could do at this point the strike was instantly blocked and pushed back by Naruto with incredible ease and strength in his right hand holding currently holding the training sword against the real one John possessed motioning for John to try again the young wolf did so and the two had begun their little dance with the weapon of choice they possessed the crowd around the two of them had gotten bigger some people even placing bets and cheering both duelists on the sage is good very good I'm starting to sweat and he's not even breathing hard or looking tired from fighting I could increase my skill from this one spar alone then if I spar with Rob in 20 I need to remind myself to have Rob fight him and see where we both stand in terms of skill level thought John before he began to fight Naruto again and Yet the sage still held his ground with a seemingly unbreakable defense you're trying to hard now your moves are getting more desperate more sloppy calm your mind John focus commanded Naruto while seeing John was beginning to tire from this fight with him nodding at Naruto's words the young legitimized Stark attacked him once again but his movements were more fluid and precise this time one person gasped when they thought John had nearly nicked the mask Naruto wore but it was blocked by the sage at the last moment and the man himself nodded in respect at having someone so close do that of course Naruto was holding back a great deal of his strength and skill but it was most impressive for one so young to do that without chakra helping to give him an edge enough the match is a draw though respectfully I think the sage is winner anyone with a sharp mind and I can tell he was holding back said Roderick while seeing John wipe the sweat off his brow while Naruto just shrugged and didn't bother Denying it while true John's got the skills to become a great swordsman I bet the same could be said for Rob if I had a chance to test his own skills against me said Naruto since he had heard the two were nearly equal when it came to their skills using a sword I must say that was impressive great sage indeed the bard songs and stories of your skills do not do you justice they should be flogged mercilessly for their inept failure to capture the description of your strength said a voice near waist level and the three of them saw one Tyrion Lannister looking up at them with a smile on his face thank you for the compliment Tyrion Lannister son of Tywin Lannister though I do wish you would keep the comment about the bards being flogged to yourself I don't want anyone to get any ideas of punishing them simply because their stories are not up to the standards of others said Naruto with Tyrion nodding with his smile increasing since he wasn't being imp or dwarf for his short size indeed a humble man with such power is practically unheard of but I will respect your wishes all the same if only because you don't refer to me in the imp and address me as myself and as for you you must be Ned Stark's former bastard said Tyrion with John frowning a bit but not at all the same I was a former bastard I haven't been one for some time now thanks to my father why do you want to know said John with Tyrion nodding and giving the young man a once over no real reason I can see why he made you legitimate your features are clearly that of a Stark in every sense of the word not many Lannisters have been known to sire bastards and if they do the women and the child in question don't receive the loving treatment you have with your own even if the bastards we Lannisters have produced have shown some promise of great potential my advice to you is to milk this for all it's worth like a baby sucking on his mother's big tits before she weans him off it said Tyrion since he knew the only reason 
he wasn't labeled one was due to his father being Tywin Lannister and the man knew the sad painful truth that the creature for a baby who killed Tywin's wife when bringing this deformed man into the world years ago now currently standing in front of these two was his son Tywin knew without question his wife had been faithful to him and never strayed to lay with another man it was that reason and that reason alone that he accepted Tyrion, as his son despite the fact he was a dwarf with his deformed body causing the woman to die from blood loss Cersei had made it clear almost immediately that she had wanted Tyrion dead from the moment news came to her of their mother's death and her recently born little brother was the cause of it Jaime had easily stopped such a thing at every turn since he didn't blame his little brother for it women died from such things all the time whether they gave birth to deformed babies or not birthing complications, didn't distinguish between themselves from queen's ladies or small folk women they simply happen one way or another I will keep those words close to my heart Lord Lannister said John respectfully though he was a little put off by the crude words mingled in with them John go inside and get something to eat and drink before the king devours it all I wish to talk to Tyrion for a moment said Naruto with John nodding before heading inside to eat with the rest of the family I'm surprised someone such as yourself wishes to have any kind of conversation with me normally people tend to avoid my presence like they do a plague unless of course it's in a brothel with a whore and my coin purse is swollen with gold dragons when I do comment to Tyrion as he heard Naruto chuckle and found the sage to be an interesting fellow to be sure while I am no whore for one thing second I'm not here for the gold dragons you may or may not still have from your visits to the brothels near here third my reason for talking to you revolves around your Family replied Naruto with him retrieving his staff and seeing Tyrion smile leave him a bit and what does a sage with your reputation like yourself wish to know about my family wishing to offer your services to my house for a fee while my family is considered the wealthiest in all of Westeros I doubt even we could afford your services said Tyrion while Naruto just shrugged before sitting down on a nearby bench know nothing like that I assure you I wish to ask about your father and your siblings. I wish to know more about them and you are the only honest Lannister by far despite your reputation for drinking and whoring answered Naruto with Tyrion raising an eyebrow at him since he wasn't expecting that I'm pretty sure you have met my father before now during both Robert's rebellion and the Greyjoy rebellion so the real questions you wish to ask me surround my siblings and what they are like outside of their daily lives of the people deduced. Tyrion since he was still quite sober right now and his mind was sharp enough to know enough about the man to know a faint for a question when asked smart man though I do have one question or two about your father the real questions are about your siblings said Naruto while impressed with Tyrion's mind being so sharp I'll be happy to answer any and all questions about them no matter how embarrassing or humiliating it might be for them in the future replied Tyrion in a cheeky tone Winterfell the Next day Naruto watched as Ned and Robert went off to hunt with a combination of Kingsguard Stark and Lannister men beside them watching intently as the two men talked while they set out to hunt deer boar or whatever else they found Tyrion had provided him further insight into Cersei Jaime and above all else Tywin Lannister in terms of just how far they would go to get their way Tyrion despite being a Lannister heir, the only one left legally capable of being Tywin's heir to Casterly Rock at this. Point held no such ambition or rather one that didn't involve backstabbing or killing people to achieve his goals Tyrion did have the ambition but it was more for acknowledgement and being considered more than just the Lannister imp to be known beyond the stain of being the preverbal black sheep of the family though it was amusing to think of Lannisters as sheep in the first place since the house sigil told him otherwise. Glancing to his right Naruto saw Bran was climbing the old tower once. Again no doubt wanting to see his father and the king riding off before they were consumed by the forest where all the game was located indeed Bran Stark was every bit like his ancestor Bran the Builder and knew the boy would do wonderful things in the future sensing himself being watched Naruto turned to his left to see Arya staring at him with a scowl on her face she did a lot of that lately no doubt, because her mother kept having her learn to do all the things a proper lady would do and that wasn't Arya she liked the idea of using swords over playing with dolls she liked the idea of playing the mud over learning how to sew Arya was a tomboy in every sense of the world are you really a sage and can use magic and wield weapons capable of killing well over a thousand men asked Arya in rapid succession in order yes yes and yes why I wish to become a student of mine asked Naruto curiously with a hint of amusement in his voice would you teach me how to use magic asked Arya since she would Enjoy using it to play all sorts of pranks on her siblings mainly Sansa no replied Naruto with Arya frowning heavier now what about how to wield a sword asked Arya since she wanted to use them like her brothers but her mother put a stop to that I could but I won't replied Naruto with Arya scowling heavier why not is it because I'm a girl because you are like everyone else and believe only boys and men can wield swords asked Arya with a sense of anger and impatience at being told no by everyone. 
because what she wanted to do was considered unbefitting someone of her gender no of course not I'm not going to teach you because you are not ready to learn from me yet you need to learn how to crawl before you can walk and you need to walk before learning how to run it's the same way with swordsmanship in general you need to have a competent teacher to learn the basics. Before I even consider teaching you how to use a sword replied Naruto with Arya's scowl lessening slightly but no one will. Teach me how to use a sword my mother won't allow it and the others here won't out of fear of my father punishing them replied Arya though her father did give her more leeway since she reminded him a lot of Lyanna when growing up and not being as girly as other women folk had been that's not exactly accurate it's more like the instructor you need isn't here at Winterfell. To teach you answered Naruto with Arya's scowl returning where would I find one asked Arya with Naruto thinking it over in his. Head for a brief second my guess would be in King's Landing it is a central hub for everything and anything one could want for the right price as your father is now the new hand of the king he can get you just about anything King's Landing possesses within reason you would have to talk to him first but I'm sure you would be able to acquire a proper instructor said Naruto with Arya thinking it over in her mind. Before nodding do you have any students still alive asked Arya curiously oh I have taught a few over the years most of them are dead now but they taught quite a few students of their own some became bravosi swordsmen who use what is called the water dance and meant to use precision over brute strength something i find to be the best way to fight your enemy since anyone can pick up a sword and fling it around to hurt someone i also taught sir barris tan selmi in his younger years answered naruto to Arya's shock sir barris tan selmi also known as barris tan the bold of the Kingsguard asked Arya in shock with Naruto nodding the very same how do you think a man his age is still considered the best swordsman in all of the seven kingdoms he was a boy when I first taught him born from a minor house he had wanted to do something grand with his life to serve some higher cause and wield a sword to protect the realm of men with all of his being I respected him for his beliefs and having them at such a young age so I trained him in fact he became my very last student even. Now I'm proud of him not once as Sir Baristan swayed from his convictions and kept his oath to serve the king sitting on the throne despite the last one not being of sound mind replied Naruto with Arya looking shocked that one of the king's guard had been taught by the sage himself I heard from my father that Roose Bolton wanted to have Sir Baristan executed but was pardoned and became the lord commander said Arya, since she had her father tell her stories of the knights and warriors who fought. During Robert's rebellion and Greyjoy rebellion that is true your father and Robert respected Sir Barris Tan so they felt a man of his station showing such loyalty was to be rewarded not punished replied Naruto with Arya looking more impressed by this if you had been in King's Landing and faced Sir Barris Tan would you have fought and killed him asked Arya curiously and Naruto had a far away look in his eyes I was in King's Landing my dear and I fought quite a few Kingsguard but I made sure never to encounter my old student during the fighting not because I feared his strength and skill with a sword but rather the outcome should we have clashed if I did face him then yes I would have fought Sir Barris Tan killed him I couldn't answer that until I had the sword poised to make such a strike answered Naruto before he looked to his right and saw Bran falling from the tower and quickly used Kamui to appear below where he was falling to catch the boy unfortunately the poor boy had hit his head somewhere along the tower and had lost any form of consciousness beside him the dire wolf growled at him but a quick look from naruto silenced the animal into submission Arya, having seen him act to catch bran quickly ran to get her mother and tell her what happened moving swiftly naruto heads to the boy's bedroom after asking a servant its location to place him there and was soon met by a worried stark family with bran's mother of the forefront bran bran wake up my son my child please wake up pleaded Caitlin while she was held back by Rob and John while Naruto gave him a once over it's a good thing I caught him the fall would have most likely broken his back and he would have been crippled for life whispered Naruto while using his skills to heal the boy's head injury will my son be okay when he wakes up asked Caitlin while Naruto nodded a bit sore with a headache but that's to be expected even when I finish healing him of his head injury curious though remarked Naruto with a frown and his eyes narrowed what asked Rob since he saw the sage's eyes narrow this head injury wasn't caused by the rock of the tower from one falling and hitting it on the way down the force behind the blow is too strong someone grabbed his head and slammed it into the rock before throwing him off the tower most likely from the top of the tower where the window is located meaning someone pushed him surmised. Naruto with the Starks in the room looked shocked someone tried to kill my son why who would do such a thing asked Caitlin while a sense of dread filled her in the belief it was one of the Lannisters or their men Rob gets Sir Roderick and a few capable men go to the top of the tower where Bran was climbing and look for clues take your dire wolves if you must they might be able to find the scent of the person or persons responsible for this action commanded Ned with Rob nodding and motion for. 
John to follow since they had the two best trained dire wolves of their entire family do you think Bran will remember who pushed him when he awakens asked Caitlin with Naruto looking unsure maybe even with my healing his head injury the boy might have memory lost a few minutes hours maybe the entire day at most will be lost to him images and faces of the moment before the fall could be hazy if words were spoken he may not recall them or who spoke them I can only heal the injury I cannot heal the memory whatever he does try to recall will seem more like a dream than a memory replied Naruto before putting his hand away and smiled behind his mask at seeing the boy was now sleeping now rather than being in a coma when will he awaken asked Caitlin while hoping it would be soon in a day or two I healed the injury but his mind will wait until it feels it's ready and considers the injury healed enough that it's safe for Bran to open his eyes answered Naruto calmly while seeing Bran still Unnamed dire wolf sit on the bed and watching everyone in the room carefully I want two guards posted at the door Bran's dire wolf can stay as a last line of defense in case someone tries to harm him I'm staying here with Bran if anyone tries to harm my son they will have to go through me as well said Caitlin while sitting in a chair beside Bran and held her son's hand Maester Lewin wanted to protest but Naruto put his hand on the man's shoulder and shook his head no to anything he planned to. Say let her stay Lewin besides a headstrong Tully woman is someone you can win against in any argument especially one protecting her son from possible threats you would have a better chance getting the White Walkers to bend the knee to us said Naruto with Lewin letting out a small laugh at that since it was true with a nod to the woman Naruto left the family talk and prepare additional defenses for their home against whoever violated the sanctity of Winterfell hours soon passed and Ned returned with Robert from a good hunt only to be hit hard by the news of Bran falling from the tower Caitlin didn't dare risk telling Ned the truth with Robert and his escort around as for Naruto he made his way into the courtyard where some horses were out near the stable but were resting comfortably near them was Sandor Clegane and Crown Prince Joffrey Baratheon being talked to by Tyrion, over something my mother has been looking for you we ride for King's Landing today said Joffrey in his usual whining sound for a voice before you go you will call on Lord and Lady Stark and offer your sympathy said Tyrion since he knew all about proper etiquette from his father who drilled it into all three of his children's skulls and oddly enough only his youngest truly embracing it ironic considering the only one who listened was also the one most despised by Tywin himself. Cersei felt she could do just about whatever she wanted in life simply because she was a Lannister the daughter of Tywin. Lannister to be exact and then later as Queen of the Seven Kingdoms Jaime felt no one would do anything to him simply because he was good with a sword had a certain wit about him and a charm that made women spread their legs for him if he wanted it and despite his oaths taken when being a Kingsguard he had done just that what good will my sympathies do them asked Joffrey to his uncle in confusion none, but it is to be expected your absence has already been noted remarked Tyrion as he was sure it wasn't but Joffrey didn't know that and even if he did the boy's father would know before smacking his son over the head with a metal gauntlet covered fist that boy who fell means nothing to me besides I can't stand the wailing of women said Joffrey with a grin while glancing up at the hound like the man should be impressed with his decision only to be slapped in the face by Tyrion who was not amused by his nephew's idiocy one more word like that and I will hit you stated Tyrion with a frown and saw out of the corner of his eye that even the hound was impressed by the dwarf's sudden boldness and hitting the prince right in the face I'm telling mother whine Joffrey in a way that every spoiled child whines when they don't get their way and hide behind the parent who spoils them rotten go ahead tell her boy tell her how you show no sympathy or respect for the lord of Winterfell who was just recently made hand of the king over the near death of their second young son a boy who if left this world for the next would have been unable to use his wonderful mind to make and build new innovative things that would one day benefit the world as a whole I also like to see you complain to her while in the presence of your father remarked Naruto while walking up to the group and interrupting what would surely been the second hit aimed at Joffrey's face by Tyrion though Naruto felt a second strike was deserved I won't forget this wine Joffrey, before he took off running with his face red with embarrassment at being humiliated like this by his own uncle the sage and in front of the hound no less the prince will remember that little lord mumbled the hound to Tyrion since he knew the boy had a long memory of those who unknowingly or knowingly crossed him he's lucky I didn't hit him as well I would have hit the brat with enough force to make him lose a few teeth if not break his nose in the process remarked Naruto while looking back at where Joffrey had gone and frowned and thought it was a good lesson for him if he forgets be a good dog and remind him said Tyrion in a mocking fashion toward Sandor before walking off while it was supposed to be a good lesson for the spoiled brat I doubt Joffrey is the kind of student who listens to his teachers unless they share the same interest said Naruto to the hound who nodded slowly and glancing around for any Lannister men who may have seen the altercation I the boy needs a good beating his father once gave him one such a beating. 
when younger for killing a pregnant cat it was actually the one that belonged to the little prince Tom and during his infant years so the boy doesn't remember it much said Sandor as he wished his own father had defended him from Gregor when his older brother burned his face over a toy sadly nothing happened it seemed even their own father feared Gregor too much to do anything to the future mountain that writes, when they were just children that boy is messed up in the head there is something in his. Mind that's broke inside a budding madness to be sure better keep an eye on him Sandor if I'm truly right about him then killing pregnant cats and the lack of respect to high lords is just the scratch beneath the service that is Prince Joffrey Baratheon said Naruto before walking off with Sandor Clegane looking at him in surprise at being called his actual name and not dog or hound like so many others, did he didn't even realize his head moved to nod at the request until the sage was gone. Winterfell Great Dining Hall breakfast was served on time for everyone who entered if there was one thing about the North that even Cersei could respect were servants who were on time with food and while she loathed to admit it even to herself some of the food was actually better than what was in King's Landing and what the servants at Casterly Rock had ever made for her when growing up. As a child it was just one more thing she hated about the North about the Starks about the Tullus everything. That wasn't Lannister herself Jamie or her three beautiful children by blood Joffrey being everything she had come to nurture in him about what it meant to be a Lannister not Baratheon let Robert have his horse's small army of bastard children and the memory of Lyanna Stark she had Jamie she had Joffrey Tommen and Marcella she didn't need anyone else nor did she want anyone else ah sister dear it's so good to see you this morning hello. Brother my dear niece and nephew said Tyrion after walking into the hall and snagging some bacon from young Tommen's plate little brother you're cheerful this morning considering where you slept last night said Jamie with Tyrion shrugged I have slept in worse places commented Tyrion with a shrug and truth be told he had slept in worse following a night of intense drinking is Bran going to die I heard he fell and hurt himself said Marcella, since she liked Bran and had talked with him while they pen is dire wolf and trying to think up names for it oh no he'll be fine said Tyrion in a confident tone and missed the brief look of worry on Cersei's face that mirrored Jamie's for that same moment what do you mean asked Cersei while still sounding tired so Tyrion would assume she didn't understand his answer well luckily it just so happened from what one of the servants told me before I walked in here the sage was walking about and talking to Arya Stark when it happened he saw Bran fall and Caught him before the poor boy hit the ground not only is the Bran alive but he is not paralyzed from the waist down thank the gods the poor boy would have been crippled if the fall didn't kill him answered Tyrion calmly with his siblings more worried than ever and the boy's memory did the sage say anything about what the boy may or may not remember asked Jamie with Tyrion. Shrugged from what the servants told me the poor boy will have some kind of memory loss a minute here an hour there may be. The whole day at worst but he will have full function of his mental faculties thanks to the sage using his power to reduce the swelling in Bran's head in time said Tyrion while eating some more food and drinking wine and when is the boy expected to awaken asked Cersei while trying to keep her voice neutral in terms of tone later today or tomorrow still the Starks for some reason feel foul play was involved and have posted guards at his door. With the boy's mother at his bedside I pity the fool. Who thinks they can challenge a protective mother and a tully of all things said Tyrion with the last part being a joke and laughed all the while completely forgetting to mention the fact Bran had his dire wolf in the room for added security before talking about going to the wall to see the grand structure made by Bran the builder Cersei of course didn't want his foul mouth to infect her children by having them repeating his words to others and make them seem uncivilized to that end she took them out of the grand hall with Jamie eating some more before joining her later that day I can't believe you pushed the boy out the window and not only did he live following the fall but that damn sage healed his head wound you gave him now he might wake up and tell everyone what he saw exclaimed Cersei worriedly while pacing back and forth she was so close south close to getting her son on the throne a few more months of having to put up with her drunken pig of a husband and when the time was Right she would have her trusted agent make his move to put the man out of her misery if Robert ever found out she was not only fucking her own brother her twin brother no less he would have her killed worse if he found out all three of her children did not have one drop of Baratheon blood in them they would either be killed or sent up to the wall where death would be merciful by comparison. Relax he's a 10 year old boy whatever he tells them will make no sense in their eyes and they will see it. As a weird perverted dream of a growing boy besides I already took care of things to ensure the Stark child doesn't say anything soon our agent will make his move and silence the boy before he can awaken said Jamie calmly while Cersei looked concerned by this news what do you mean what did you do questioned Cersei with Jamie shrugging I just had one of our men from House Lannister take care of things after we leave this cold and disgusting place I normally have one on call in the event someone 
might have seen us when we fuck answered Jamie without a hint of remorse in his voice or eyes and this man can be trusted how do you know he doesn't know our secret too asked Cersei worriedly the only thing the man knows is he's being paid to silence anyone who sees me fucking a woman he also knows I pay himself well enough. Not to know who the woman is that I'm fucking said Jamie with Cersei still not being convinced kill the man after you pay him make it seem like it was some kind of deal gone. Wrong the few who know of our indiscretions the better said Cersei while glad she had been able to get to her room and sprayed herself with some new perfume after her time with Jamie in that tower it successfully sent those damn dire wolves off her scent and trail when they picked up what went on in that damn tower she had to spray some perfume lightly on Jamie's own armor carefully in certain places to make everyone believe he was outside of her room, when Bran fell but in a way to make. Everyone believe he was only guarding her body not fucking it fine with me I was going to do it anyway he was asking for a bit more money and was no doubt getting suspicious of who the lucky woman was if the Stark guards don't kill him trying to get to the boy I will do it myself replied Jamie with his usually charming smile neither saw a single black inky looking mouse hearing their entire discussion before it had heard enough and rushed off Winterfell elsewhere Naruto knew something was off. After he recovered Bran from his fall at the old tower the boy loved to climb the injury the boy suffered was someone grabbing him from behind his head and slamming it hard against the stone surface before giving the stunned child a push and inspection of the tower by Rob John their dire wolves and a few stark men specializing in tracking had investigated the area aside from a single stand of blonde hair there was no real evidence, saying Bran had been pushed when news had reached Robert after. Returning from the hunt the man exploded with rage at the idea of his dear friend's son nearly being killed Naruto had assured both Robert and a worried Ned there were some leads but nothing definite he only asked for both men to show patience and no Bran was recovering with his memory of the event possibly returning so he could identify his attacker but Naruto had no intention of waiting to see if the boy remembered what happened and the dire wolves had lost the trail when a new scent had invaded their noses someone had gone to great lengths to hide who they were and what they did before Bran got there to see it too judging from what the dire wolves smelled along with the northern trackers themselves two people were up there going at it and for quite a while before the two individuals saw Bran and were discovered so with foul play clearly being shown a hunt was on for the attackers and find out why they tried to silence Bran so Naruto decided to focus on finding out who was where. Within the walls of Winterfell at the time of the incident he had suspicions on a few people but his interrogation of them which they would never remember in the slightest revealed they were innocent and thus the investigation started to narrow down the suspects Joffrey himself was such a suspect but the brat was actually innocent for once as the hound had been with him every step of the way and not even the giant of a man was going to let the prince do such an act on his watch so with the Spoiled prince and his siblings cleared of any and all wrongdoing here the sage of ancient forgotten arts and the ways of chakra searched for other possible criminals capable of the crime if children did not hurt Bran and given what clearly happened when the boy had made it to the top of the tower the culprits were clearly adults meaning he was looking for two adults who smelled off from all others in Winterfell so Naruto had followed the dire wolves from the shadows and inspected the hair found within the tower which helped narrow down the list of suspects by far to those with blonde hair it was actually one of the reasons he suspected Joffrey until his alibi checked out and the hair itself being too long for it to belong to the spoiled shit and it was feminine in nature so the hair belonged to a woman given the perfume scent behind it which meant it was a blonde haired woman who had clearly done something with someone she wasn't supposed to be doing and since Marcella was too young to be doing any such thing with anyone it left only one blonde haired woman within Winterfell at the moment Cersei Lannister so with that in mind Naruto traced Cersei's movements for the day and found it strange her scent had a strong presence of newly applied perfume Cersei may have understood the principle of throwing people and hounds off your scent by masking it with other types of chemicals like perfume, given how she had to hide it from dire wolves just showed. The Lannister woman was sharp and quick to act in throwing suspicion off of her but Naruto had invaded Inazuka hounds and Inazuka clan members in general since he could walk thanks to his pranks back during the days of old as a child he was attuned with nature and could see here and smell things where others could not as such Cersei's attempt to hide things from him were amateurish at best in fact such a description was generous on his end and only considered as such given how Cersei had sprayed some of it on Jamie to make her story seem true on where she was at the time of Bran's near-death experience but Naruto knew otherwise he knew a liar when he saw one and Cersei was the definition of a liar just as Gregor Clegane was the definition of a cruel heartless goat fucker who should have been killed before he learned how to walk so with one suspect in mind and the other being Jamie, as the one person she could turn to for covering up her actions in the tower Naruto sent a little link. 
Mouse to scurry about and follow Cersei around before everyone departed for King's Landing if the news of Bran being alive and would awake frightened either sibling they would react accordingly in some fashion and the ink mouse he sent would record everything spoken before it ran back to give its report speaking of his little creation there you are my little inky spy I wish I was around so I could thank him for leaving behind his understanding of using ink jutsus now get on this parchment and Show me what you heard and put it into words commanded Naruto with a scroll being unrolled that was blank for the ink mouse to dive into with a nice splat before everything Jamie and Cersei said was written out word for word frowning Naruto was somewhat surprised Cersei was having relations with her twin brother Jamie. he had lived long enough to see the Targaryens embracing such a practice as well as clans back during the days growing up and learning about the ways of the world but to this extent not even the Targaryens went this far within breeding and incest relations and the belief of keeping the bloodline pure sure they did it with brother and sister like these two had done but they never did it with twins with identical DNA and only the gender between them being different not only that but there was the issue of Cersei's three children were they even Roberts by blood and therefore the rightful heirs to the throne Joffrey was clearly not Robert's child though Naruto suspected. Robert couldn't see this because he was blinded by love for the late Lioness Stark his drinking whoring and not exactly in that order Tommen and Rosella were a coin toss Tommen didn't really have anything that one could call Baratheon features but he wasn't a psychotic mess like Joffrey clearly was and had a gentle disposition to him he might make a nice gentle king if Joffrey were to suddenly die and Robert named Tommen his heir but it would just leave the boy a big fat target for all the Snakes in King's Landing his mother certainly wasn't going to help him be a great king and would only raise more problems to combat if it meant she could be by his side to control Tommen from the shadows as for Marcella she clearly inherited her mother's childhood form and would become a beautiful woman just like her mother Naruto only hoped if Marcella didn't inherit her mother's cruelty or hatred. For all things not Lannister by blood he liked to think Cersei's last two children had been saved from the sheer madness of the mind that Joffrey and the Targaryens themselves in the past had gained from the persistent tradition of inbreeding and incest though one cannot overlook the nurturing of madness by someone being factored into the nature of inheriting the madness genetically in any case Naruto would have to watch everything Lannister from here on out and make sure they didn't do anything to endanger the Seven Kingdoms in their current fragile state just because Robert was the king. Of all seven kingdoms didn't mean he was a good king and keeping things stable there was a lingering unrest within the difference houses thought at all and many of them were still secretly Targaryen supporters waiting for the fat and bloated stag to die from as many life shortening vices as for Dorne Prince Dorian had kept Elia Martell and her children from being discovered for years since King's Landing had been sacked, but Naruto was sure a certain spider for an eunuch living within King's. Landing knew differently and was keeping that tidbit of information in his back pocket to use at a later time for an emergency should his position become compromised not that the spider would ever reveal it to anyone even if the man really wanted to since Naruto was also a secret acquaintance of his for many years and wouldn't allow it not without permission anyway both had done much in the shadows to keep the realm stable as a whole of course Varys had disillusions regarding how the current King ran the Seven Kingdoms and knew Joffrey being on the throne would be far worse to the point being the second coming of the Mad King Naruto had agreed with him and felt the Targaryens were still the rightful rulers to the Iron Throne provided of course they weren't crazy and didn't want to burn every single thing in sight so far it didn't look good for the remaining members of House Targaryen Viserys, was showing signs of the madness even now from what Naruto knew of the boy thinking himself. Already as the king of the seven kingdoms who was simply untouchable on that principle alone and was going to every person stupid enough to back him financially to fund his campaign to raise an army to take back his family legacy Elia Martell's children were living happily in Dorne and was keeping her children out of the Game of Thrones in its entirety all she wanted to do was live happily in Dorne, with her children away from the horrifying seat of tyranny the Iron Throne was known for in the past not that Naruto blamed her the Iron Throne really was a horrifying seat of tyranny and should have been destroyed by Robert to signify a new era without such means to rule being necessary but that was neither here nor there what Naruto needed to do was focus on certain lions licking their chops at the sight of the dying stag and getting ready to pounce personally Naruto didn't care for Robert due to his whoring and drinking ways. After the death of Lioness Stark the man was coping in all the wrong ways and in doing so made his wife spiteful to the point where she was clearly going to do something soon once Joffrey was old enough in her eyes to become king a king she could manipulate control and one who will help ensure the power if not the very lifestyle as a queen never leaving her as time went by shaking his head at the thought Naruto decided he would have to go to King's Landing and help Ned fix what was clearly broken there Ned was a good man a rarity these days given how 
people found it easier to be dishonorable and cruel over honorable and caring as he headed outside Naruto focused on seeing John inspecting a sword the blacksmith had made and saw Jamie approach him with his usual arrogant smirk and walk a sword for the wall asked Jamie curiously at the sight of the weapon already have one replied John while keeping the identity of who this sword went to a very close guarded secret good man, have you swung it yet asked Jamie while glancing at the sword on John's. Waste of course I have replied John since he had been trained by his father at a young age to wield a sword and shown much promise I trust you find training with a real sword is much different than fighting with an actual one commented Jamie while John put the sword away the Night's Watch has defended the North at the Wall for 800 years replied John with Jamie raising an eyebrow planning on taking the black. And saying your vows asked Jamie since he was sure Cersei would find that soothing with one less wolf in the den to threaten the lion no not yet my father wants me to go to the wall and inspect it first before I make a decision while he's serving his hand I will be helping out at the wall to see what needs to be improved and if necessary take the black to strengthen their numbers further I will report my findings to my brother Rob, and if necessary send a raven to my father to get further men. Sent up to the wall when he arrives at King's Landing said John with Jamie frowning a bit since he was sure the former bastard would take the black at this point give my regards to the Night's Watch and if you do fail it's only for life no pressure said Jamie before walking away don't listen to him John you won't fail in your duty whether as a member of the Night's Watch or as a member of House Stark trust your instincts and remember to do what is right, even if other people don't like it and only. If you believe in it replied Naruto while John nodded in agreement I will how did your sparring session with Rob go he wouldn't tell me asked John curiously since the two had sparred earlier that morning before the issue with Bran had occurred let us just say Rob now knows what it feels like to fight someone truly stronger than himself it was a very humbling experience on his end the last thing someone like you or Rob need right now is your egos getting so filled with hot air that they equal. The size of Jamie Lannister replied Naruto with John letting out a chuckle thanks still I wish the Kingslayer would be sent to the wall the only reason he isn't is because his family wouldn't allow it remarked John with a hint of anger in his voice yeah but even if the man killed his king despite the oath he took it was probably for the best that he did said Naruto with John looking at him in surprise. Why would you say that asked John with Naruto letting out a chuckle while I despise Jamie for the Many things he's done in life killing the Mad King is not one of them what the Mad King wanted done before his fall would have left only Ash in his wake and all the people of King's Landing being part of it through Jamie's act of oath breaking he saved countless lives within King's Landing you may dislike Jamie for what he did but when you understand the reason behind it I think deep down people would not call him Kingslayer with such disrespect answered Naruto with John looking down for a Second so you respect him asked John with Naruto shaking his head no fuck no I hate everything about the arrogant prick the act he did to save the people in King's Landing from the Mad King is the only thing I do respect nothing else replied Naruto before looking at the sword John had taken from the blacksmith you like it it's perfect for stabbing someone provided the enemy on the receiving end is wearing little to no armor remarked John while showing it to Naruto not bad though it is a bit small. For a man to wield but something tells me this isn't for a man or even a young boy the handle here is designed for thin female fingers to hold on to it surmised naruto while appraising the sword in his hand i but don't tell my mother who it's for her wrath alone makes me want to take the black to avoid such a confrontation whispered john with naruto smirking behind his mask angry tully women are truly a force of nature unto themselves when do you intend to give the sword here to its new owner Question Naruto with John smirking right before we leave said owner will have to hide it until she gets to King's Landing and father can provide her with a proper teacher I still think you would be considered the best teacher for her in that regard many high born lords would start a war simply for the honor answered John while Naruto shook his head no which is why my last student is now the lord commander of the king's guard and the best swordsman in all of the seven kingdoms still if Arya can. Find a teacher capable of bringing out a good foundation for me to work with I might consider it though I make no promises replied Naruto while the two walked into Arya's room and saw her packing for the trip to King's Landing I thought you packed already questioned John with Arya huffing in slight anger I had it all set for days but now I have to fold them again my things weren't properly folded she says. Who cares how they are folded they're going to get all messed up anyway stated Arya in frustration while stuffing her clothing extra hard at the last part well it's a good thing you have helped commented John while staring at Arya's dire wolf watch this Nymeria gloves commanded Arya while Nymeria just sat there on the bed and looked bored impressive remarked John with a smirk most impressive added Naruto with a smirk of his own but couldn't be seen by his mask shut up Nymeria gloves commanded Arya with her dire wolf looking away she probably doesn't want to be seen as a normal house 
trained dog doing tricks thought Naruto since he knew the dire wolf beside Arya was just as intelligent as the others of the pack I have something for you and it has to be packed carefully so it's not discovered by our mother said John with Arya looking at him curiously a present questioned Arya while John smiled and showed it to her something to take with us on the way to King's Landing John had it made in secret since he knew your mother would not only disapprove but never let it leave. Winterfell in your hands replied Naruto while John showed her the present in question it's not a toy Arya keep it tucked away until you're at King's Landing said John while he showed her the thin pointy sword meant just for her it's so skinny commented Arya at the overall size of the sword that's the point most swords are very heavy and thus most women lack the upper body strength to pick up much less wield one this was designed to stab people with pinpoint precision you won't slice a person's head off but given the right time and angle of the opening you can definitely stab someone in a vital spot with it if you are fast enough added Naruto knowing that a needle to the neck can be just as deadly as an actual sword hitting the same spot I can be quick offered Arya enthusiastically since she was faster and more nimble than any of her brothers or sister you will have to train every day with this no slouching no quitting you want to be the best at something you have to earn it said Naruto in a stern voice which made the girl nod and knew she would do just that with the right instructor I will and I'll do it with this sword this needle stated Arya with Naruto smirking behind his mask interesting name for a sword but I've heard worse and it seems appropriate given its overall design when we get to King's Landing I will make sure your father finds a suitable instructor capable of teaching you said Naruto knowing there were a few of them in King's Landing who could teach the girl and we're more open-minded about women wielding a sword and then you'll train me asked Arya while Naruto chuckled and John smirked you are a persistent little she wolf still I won't make any promises to that effect if you train hard and prove yourself I just might but don't take that as a guarantee Arya if and when I train you and using a sword will ultimately be up to me in the end replied Naruto with the girl pouting at first but ultimately accepting his answer since she was young and untrained in the ways of the sword he wanted to see if her foundation with using needle from another teacher was worth the time in the future to train the girl himself with that business taking care of Naruto walked to the stables and saw Hotter preparing the horse for the sage giving a nod to the gentle giant Naruto sat on the horse but with his legs crossed and one hand. On the reins Hotter was confused by this since he never saw anyone sit on the horse in that manner and wondered why the masked man was even. Making the attempt without securing himself further Hotter said Hotter while Naruto looked at his confused face and understood what he wanted to ask the sage don't worry Hotter I'm not most people so I don't ride horses like everyone else does besides we'll be going at a slow pace with the escort of guards answered Naruto with Hotter nodding Hotter said Hotter while nodding take care of the Starks while I'm away also keep an eye out for anyone who should not be here I know you know everyone here in Winterfell so if you see anyone who you don't know prowling around they shouldn't be here warned Naruto with Hotter's eyes going wide and he nodded quickly Hotter Hotter exclaimed Hotter since he understood what the sage was asking of him you're a good man Hotter stick close to Bran's room tonight and the following night too while I trust the Stark guards Bran's dire wolf and Caitlyn to watch over Bran until he recovers I would prefer another pair of eyes and strong arms protecting him should the unspeakable happened said Naruto with Hotter nodding eagerly Hotter said Hotter while Naruto once more and wished his power could be used to help the one worded mini giant of a man sadly even his own power had limits at Hotter's age the chakra placed into the man's body to fix the brain of its inability to say only one word would be rejected Hotter's body would not only reject the chakra but it would be as if the man had injected snake venom into his brain and caused the poor mini giant terrible pain until death finally decided to end it also if someone does try to hurt Bran you need to ensure he is captured and kept alive for questioning under no circumstances is the assassin to be killed when caught do you understand whispered Naruto with Hotter nodding that he did though part of him was still confused on why such an attacker would be kept alive nonetheless Hotter knew his place in the world and would obey the sage's command to protect the Stark family which had been so good to him since he was brought into their service Hotter Hotter exclaimed Hotter while nodding his head satisfied with the mini giant of a man's response and understanding Naruto commanded his horse to move to join the now larger escort of the king back to King's Landing the men around him looked at him like he was riding his horse incorrectly and wondered why a strange man like the infamous demon sage was doing following their escort Robert had made it perfectly clear following the end of his rebellion against the mad king that he disliked the sage immensely due to word getting out about how the masked man had helped the Mad King's children escape Dragonstone by a single ship when being hunted by Stannis's fleet of ships during the end of the rebellion some had called for the demon sage's head for his act of treason but Robert knew better and Ned had argued that it was senseless to kill innocent children, still if their king wasn't going to order his death none here were going to try so this is where we part for. 
Now anyway commented John while he saw Tyrion and some men moving in front of him toward the direction where the wall was located I but it's only temporary we'll see each other again whether it's in Winterfell or on the wall Starks have defended the wall for thousands of years your Ben Jen did it after I returned from Robert's rebellion whether you choose to do so as well is your choice I won't force anything on you get a feel for the Night's Watch see if it's something you know is right for you. Whatever your decision I will support it with all my power said Ned with John smiling at him and looked around to see if anyone was within hearing distance of their conversation there was none uncle I just want to say thank you for everything for raising me loving me as your own son said John with Ned smiling lovingly at his nephew even if he couldn't call the young man that you are a Stark both in name and in blood I only wish Caitlin had warmed up to you sooner I couldn't tell her truth because I feared what people would think if her reaction to you shifted from disgust to one of love I feared Robert's wrath and it being aimed at you an innocent child should not have to face such things said Ned with John nodding but he still smiled all the same she's been like a mother to me since learning the truth I understand her frustrations and won't hold it against her I'm proud to be a Stark and officially called your son by both of you said John with Ned smiling more now knowing his wife's promise and contract with the gods had been fulfilled completely with those words spoken his house and that of house Tully were saved from wrath sent forth by divine powers he could not begin to battle will talk more about other things in the future namely more about my sister said Ned with John nodding and soon the younger man rode to follow the group heading up for the wall so did you say what needed to be said asked Naruto when Ned caught up to him I and more I have you to thank for that replied Ned with a sense of joy in his voice that Naruto easily picked up on I do what I can commented Naruto while they followed the royal escort with King Robert in the lead with their path for King's landing out in front, 